Hello and welcome to tonight's stream. My name is Robert Hazeldean from Do We Drift Esports and tonight we're hitting the mountain. Hopefully not as literally as that car just did then. <laughs> anyway, I'll hand you over now to our commentary team, Zach Caben and Nico Pop. Rob, good evening to you and good evening everybody. I'll take the lead here for a minute because Nick's in the middle of a qualifying run so we'll introduce him as soon as he gets the lap done here, ladies and gentlemen. It's round... Uh, 10 of the stock cars come up a little bit later on, also from Mount Panorama, but first up, the production car series, of course, not quite the end of the championship. It has been extended for a few more weeks, as we detailed here last week, but for the first time in the series, same circuit for both series tonight in the Friday Night Motorsport doubleheader. So last week it was an Australian doubleheader. This week it's a New South Wales, a Bathurst doubleheader, the Holy Grail, the 6.213 kilometres of hallowed turf, and motor racing real estate that is the Mount Panorama circuit in Bathurst, New South Wales, the Central Tablelands, of course, and looking forward to what might unfold here across the course of the next uh, three hours or so here on Do A Drift Esports. Nick's just uh, popped himself up into sixth position on the grid there. Brady McHugh is leading the charge at the moment, 225.5. Michael Hammond is 225.86. And Cohen Adard, 226.6. So a big gap between the first two and the rest of the pack at the moment. Paul Nichols, who we'll introduce shortly as well. He's sitting there four fastest at this point in time ahead of Gary Cousins and, of course, my uh, sidekick here in Nick. So looking forward to seeing how all of this goes. Nick's on another flyer right now. He's third and final lap of this qualifying session. We have had a few drivers uh, opt out of participating in the race here. We had a few drivers that came in just to get some laps around Mount Panorama before they turned their attention to the stock cars, which is, of course, coming up at the end of this broadcast. People like uh, Callum Watmore and the like. So they came in, they posted some laps. They're not going to race by the look of things here. In fact, uh, we had, oh, geez, upwards of 30 um, somewhere in the vicinity of 35 names registered to have a run in the production car race here in the, in the Mustangs tonight. 22 qualifying times have been set. So it's not a huge field, but it's a decent field for Mount Panorama. Um, we'll go through the circuit in just a moment, but you know this one like clockwork, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, the, uh, the most sacred land in the universe as uh, far as motorsport is concerned. But let's talk about the conditions for tonight's race. 
the track time set to um, 5.51 a.m. Would you believe that? That's a very early start here. It's 12-hour sort of uh, territory um, for Sunday, the 15th of November, 2020. There are our track conditions tonight. Um, now, it's, it's quite fitting that we have taken the production cars to a production car weekend. Of course, the Bath of Six Hour being run on the 14th of November this year. It's just not going to be as early as 5.51 in the morning. There's uh, Nick coming. Oh, I'm, I'm just uh, waiting for my director feed to come through. Hint, hint, Rob. Um, but at the moment, I'm having a look at Nick's qualifying run here as he comes down into Murray's corner. Looking to improve on a 227.204. I'll uh, wait and see if he can do that across the line. The answer is yes. And my good mate Nick has gone into third with his final lap in qualifying. 226.4, if you don't mind. And the, uh, the best of the rest, it's Brady McHugh and Michael Hammond ahead in the cancer on the front row. And then on the second row, Nick's got up there ahead of Cohen Adard, Paul Nichols and Gary Cousins. So nice work from him as I uh, grab the uh, director cut here from Rob. Cars on track, Mount Panorama, it's always a good thing. And uh, in the virtual world, it's, I, I, I won't say it's as special as the real deal, Nick, but it's the next best thing, isn't it? Good evening to you. Oh, good evening. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I've done that many laps around here. Um, I could do it backwards, I reckon. <laughs> Actually, that that's an interesting proposition. I like the sound of that. Not in the race, but just as a demo run, maybe one day. They, I know they do it in the hill climb, but um, that's right. Yeah, uh, we used myself, Paul Nichols, a couple of other guys. Most of the guys that originated the Gentlemen's Club. We uh, were at another group that used to do uh, Bathurst 200s every Saturday night. So um, yeah, nice. Well, how many laps was that? 33, something like that? 32 laps, 32, yeah. 33, yeah. So um, we've done a lot of laps almost every Saturday night for, I think, two years there. I think it was about 1,000 laps we worked out. Hey, nothing wrong with that. The more, the better, as they say. Um, Paul Nichols, good evening to you, mate. Uh, a Friday night doubleheader, the way we like it. And for the first time, as I pointed out in the opener, the, the same circuit for both championships. This will be exciting. Yeah, Nick and I were talking about that. We're going to align because um, the, the stock car series is finished uh, as of tonight will be the last round, but the, um, the production car series is going to run. The all sorts of production car series is going to run for another, probably to, to the end of June. Um, yep. So Nick might throw up some special events, but we're thinking about aligning all the races from now on. So we'll have production cars at the same track as the stock cars um, going forward. So Nick's going to uh, work that out for the schedule. So we'll let you know what that is. Sounds like a, a, a reasonable uh, thing to do. I mean, sounds like a logical thing to do because we often see guys doubling up running production cars, then stock cars, rather than having to just adapt to two different tracks. They'll just be able to uh, jump out of one car into the other and, and go again. Yeah, absolutely. And also um, from, a, you know, we, the production car series have always set up to be a support class. So let's do it like in real life. It's a support class that runs earlier. Um, different cars, and then the stock cars jump on. Indeed. Now, uh, interesting to note that this is the uh, the midway point, essentially, of the production car series because you boys have extended the championship. I think there's another five events to look forward to on the back end here. Um, so it's a little bit too early, potentially, Nick, to start talking about the championship fight. Nick okay, Pop. Yep. Oh, oh, right. Sorry. Well, I was just thinking this is the final round of the um, stock cars, but yes, it's too early to talk about the championship fight in um, production cars, of course. Uh, still Michael plenty of rounds. still in the lead. Mikey Hammond's still in the lead. I think Shane Witt's not far behind from memory. I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, access that information as we go on here, boys. The uh, yeah, Google Drive. Say okay. Anything can and will happen. So exactly. Plenty, plenty of time to go. Um, stock cars will have their final round tonight, but we'll do some special events and then realign the two calendars and we should be set to go. Standing start for this one tonight, Nick, the production cars? Correct, yep. <clears throat> nice. Now, let's have a look at the grid here and we'll run through some housekeeping as we go on. We'll check in with our in-race reporters as we go and we wish them the best of luck. Uh, Nico's uh, strategy the other night was to mute us and talk to us at the end, and that worked really well for him until the last 200 metres. <laughs> well, yeah, and I mean, I, I didn't calculate my fuel very well, did I? <laughs> no, unfortunately not. Um so it's a standing start. It's a 45-minute race. There will be one pit stop along the way here. 
Tyre wear will be interesting, of course, being Mount Panorama. This is the same car that the boys ran at Oran Park last Friday night. So instead of going week to week learning track and car in the space of an hour practice session, they only had to get used to the track. They were already familiar with the car. It's Brady McKeel, Michael Hammond on the front row. Nick on the second row alongside Cohen Adard, Paul Nichols and Gary Cousins the third row. Simon Ferris and Shane with the fourth row. Blake Urquhart. I mean, Daniel H, the uh, fifth row, we go back outside the top 10. Josh Thomas, Jonathan Turner, the two JT, they share the sixth row there alongside Josh Millard and uh, Tyron uh, Thompson on the sec on the seventh row, I should say, Pete Matson and uh, Alan Verhoda on the uh, eighth row, Michael Porter and Daniel uh, David Anderson, I should say, on the uh, ninth row, Grant Gill and William Pym on the tenth row. Then you go back to Luke Keamy, Peter Clark. And Michael Heath uh, rounding out the field. They're off. They're racing. It's a great start from Michael Hammond and Brady McHugh on the front row there. McHugh's going to get the run to turn one. Watch them scramble through here. Normally a, a difficult run, but the field very well spread out with the way the iRacing grid is set. We've had a couple of cars sideways at the back, but other than that, we're OK. We're on our way up the hill for the first time. Great start, clean start from all concerned there. And uh, I, I apologise, I said it was uh, Michael Heath. It's Mitchell Heath. My apologies there. Around they go. It looks like we've got 31 starters in all of this, according to our uh, our uh, race timing setup, courtesy of iRacing. And that means a lot more traffic to contend with than we first thought, and a lot of people doing what Nick normally does, and that's burning from the stern. The interesting thing with uh, Nick's approach tonight, it's hell-bent serious. He's out there to win this thing, hence the qualifying run, hence how happy he was with third on the grid. Because he knows how difficult it is to overtake around here, and that it's a concrete cannon if you get it wrong. So 6.213 yeah. kilometres, 23 turns. I, I don't need to say anything more than that, Nick. Oh, I was just going to say, we know smoking's hazardous to your health, so starting last at Bathurst, so... <laughs> yes. um, Especially coming down the hill, there's lots of walls and there's going to be cars blocking the track. So be up the front and stay at the pointy end. Indeed. A couple of cars further back in the pack. We've got our eye on there at the moment. Leaders are heading into Forest Elbow for the first time. We're watching a couple of cars come down the hill. And one in trouble in the dipper already. Make that two in trouble. One on the entrance and one on the exit. Uh, not a great start there. But we can tell you that uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of cards on the grid. It's probably our biggest production car field of the season. A lot of uh, interesting talking points coming into this race, of course. The battle in the championship has been Michael Hammond and, and Shane Witt. And uh, Hammond, of course, got the edge in qualifying. Down under the bridge for the first time. Round onto the main straight. Sunrise in Bathurst. It doesn't get any better than this, does it? Cross the line. We ride with Brady McHugh. Hammond's in second spot. Nick's in behind them. To Hell Corner. The run up mountain straight. The climb to the top of the mountain. Four way fight at the front already. Cohen Adard's in there behind Nick at the moment. And they're doing their best to go with the lead to Brady McHugh and Michael Hammond. Of course, reminding you. As we watch uh, Hammond look to come down on the inside of Brady McHugh. And Hammond goes to the lead. Nice move there on the inside into Pedigree Corner. The old Griffins bend, of course, as they head up to the cutting for the second time. Brady McHugh relegated to second. Reminded these two gentlemen were first and second on the grid. But we should point out that they were the only two in the 25s in qualifying pace. Brady McHugh had nine tenths of a second on Nick. Hammond had six tenths of a second on him. So for Hammond, for, sorry, for Nick and Cohen Adard to go with these guys, they're going to have to find some pace as the race goes on. The, the competition safety car will bring them back to the field, obviously, but then it's about uh, so much more than the, uh, the caution. It's about luck. It's about keeping it smooth, consistent, not making any mistakes. We've seen mistakes bringing uh, Michael Hammond run done in this championship so far, be it through incident points or penalties or something. 
He'll be desperate to win this one tonight. But then again, it's Bathurst. Everyone's desperate to win into the elbow for the second time. Very narrow run through there. And no, uh, wrong goes Brady McHugh. The 39's gone spinning out of the elbow. And he's a target for everyone else, but he gets it off the racing line, gets it gathered up, spins it back around, but it's lost a bunch of spots in the process there as Nick moves into second position now and the pursuit for Michael Hammond begins. Big to fight a moment there early for Brady McHugh, Nick. He did that all by himself. Well, I, 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 I gathered as much because you were about four car lengths behind him. He just started getting loose on the, the right-hander on the entry and then he was gone as he went through the apex. Unfortunate. Yeah. Certainly is. Let's update you on the race order. And uh, I just want to have a look at uh, Paul Nichols here because he's down in 26th position. He qualified fifth. I'm not sure that he started there. Did you start from pit lane, Paul, or...? Oh, he's muted at the moment. We won't be able to hear from him just yet. We'll ask him when we get into the safety car um, because I, I don't recall seeing Paul run off the circuit in the opening exchanges there. So for him to be that far down suggests that he might have burned from the stern with everyone else. It's a fair tactic, but we haven't had anywhere near the carnage that we've had at somewhere like Summit Point in the uh, the racing that we've brought you so far here on Dual Drift Esports. Lap three. to Griffin's Bend. These Mustangs, a great little car. Production car racing, Mount Panorama. There's a history that we could talk about, but uh, for the Mustang, relatively new, of course, in the modern era, um, a great car running at what would normally be considered outright speed in the six hour itself, Nick. Yeah, they're, they're a good car. They got, um, the Henry's got a little bit of mumbo up the, up the hill, so. I know MX-5s are about uh, four to five seconds slower. They're, they're a hell of a lot of fun as well. But yeah, these things, um, they got the torque. Only using third, fourth and fifth gear. What was the discussion going into this race behind keeping the same car from week to week for the first time in the series, mate? Uh, that I do not know. I wasn't privy to those ones because okay. <laughs> I was too busy organising the uh, stock cars. But um, Fair enough. Continuity is good. Yeah, nothing wrong with it so far. Nothing wrong with it at all. In fact, still 32 cars running at the moment here. At Mount Panorama. Sammy Bobby, the last of the runners at the moment. But he's well down the order. In fact, a minute 55 behind our leaders. So there's been some drama on that one. A lot of these guys have dropped at least a minute on the uh, the front of the field. In fact, if you're anywhere from 24th down, you're a minute behind already in the motor race. That's a lot of time to try and salvage. Have a look at the track cam there uh, as you head into the chase. Beautiful shots as they come down into the fastest corner in Australian motorsport and out of there one more time. Nick sitting in uh, second at the moment, still chasing Michael Hammond and doing a good job of sticking with him here as well, but under pressure from Cohen Adard. Radard tucks back in, thinks better of it. Back to the main straight. Another lap in the books. Now I'm just having a look here. The, the order's going to change on me here because uh, I'm just picking it up and it looks as though Nick's dropped down to... Oh, no, actually, no, sorry. Apologies, you're coming up on lap traffic there. That's how bad it is for these guys further back in the field. They're about to get lapped and it's only lap four. Uh, you were the fourth car on the screen there and it threw me completely. But no, second yeah. in the running order, Hammond. And then Nick, then Cohen Adard, Simon Ferris, Blake Urquhart, then Shane Witt, Daniel Aish, Gary Cousins, Brady McHugh, back to ninth after that spin in the elbow. And then Tyson Thompson sits there in 10th position at this point in time. Lazy Dave Farrell in behind them, then Grant Gill. Out of Griffins, up to the cutting one more time. We were talking about Road America on Monday night. We know it's got 14 turns, but it has corner names. Mount Panorama, we don't often think about the, uh, the corner numbers per se. We know that there are 23 of them, but they've all got a synonymous name associated with them, don't they? And that's the best part. You know where you are. Like with the number, corner numbers, like Eastern Creek's the best example. The hairpin used to be called Turn 8. It's now, oh, sorry, Turn 9. Now it's called Turn 8. And you kind of have an idea, but I mean, it depends on the track layout, whereas when you've got names, you know exactly where you are. Exactly right. In fact, and this place uh, has a lot of history with each name as well. 100%. In fact, I have um, 
I can tell you from experience of commentating at Sydney Motorsport Park, even when they're using the 11 turn Grand Prix configuration, they still refer to the last four corners as 15, 16, 17, and 18 because that's the way they're meant to refer to them now. It confuses the hell out of everyone. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, don't get me started. Hey, uh, look at uh, Nick on our screen here, going down through the. Uh, no, actually, sorry, that's your teammate on our screen there. That's a uh, way oh, that's uh, teammates, yeah. Nine. Yes, that's 69 on the screen there. I saw the I saw the delivery. I just didn't see the number. So Farrelly going down through the S's and the Dipper and down into Forest Elbow one more time. Across the uh, intermediate down there as the rest of the field head down Conrod straight. Now, Farrelly's uh, 32 seconds off the leader at the moment. Let's right on board with him and enjoy the, enjoy the scenic shots of Mount Panorama. There's a car in trouble big time on the right-hand side there. <laughs> Blowing all sorts of smoke. I don't know who that is, but uh, that is a car that has uh, seen better days. There are two fast repairs available to the drivers here tonight, folks. Um, we should point out that uh, these boys started on 40% um, fuel. There will be one pit stop in all of this. Unlimited tyre sets. The setup is identical to baseline, of course. The uh, penalties come in at the... Uh, 20 point mark, so 20 points. Uh, every uh, every 20 points is a penalty. I'll get that right eventually. And then the incident <laughs> count for a DQ limit is no limits. So uh, yeah, every 20 points will warrant a, uh, a pit penalty. And uh, I'm not sure where we're at with incident points at the moment, but Nick might be able to update us on that a little bit later on in the race here. Long lap, obviously two and a half minutes almost. Not a lot of time to just sit and relax. There's always that you've, you've got to be fully focused for 100% of the lap, even on the long straights, mountain straight and Conrad. Yeah, and uh, trying to get traffic in the right spots too, because I'm coming up to McPhillamy here and I'm losing time to Mr. Hammond because, oh, please don't crash in front of me. Please don't crash. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Oh. Nearly got me. Nasty, nasty, nasty. nasty. You'll see it on the screen here, folks, across the top of the mountain. There was a car in the uh, the wall there at McCormick. And that's where patience is a virtue here, because uh, you can't force the issue. Oh, and it looks like Farrelly's just had a moment going down through the, uh, the dipper as well. Bang panel on the right-hand side for the Bailey's Ladder's entry. And that's actually, and that's actually now the 58 that we're looking at there. So that's Cousins. another one. That's Gary Cousins. So, uh, you've, you've avoided an incident. Um, Gary's been caught up in one, all on his own. He just ran a little bit deep going through the first couple of turns uh, on, the, on the climb down the hill at the Essence and the Dipper. Just before the Dipper, he ran into trouble, scraped the wall on the left-hand side. Into the chase we go one more time. Lap traffic already a factor here. Mount Panorama, Friday Night Motorsport, do a drift esports. Stock cars coming up, I can't wait for that. Thunderous roar of the stock cars around this, this uh, scenic public road that is synonymous with such a rich history in Australian motorsport and more history to come, of course, with the, uh, the new TCR event launching later in the year. To hell corner we go. The run up mountain straight. Just running through the uh, the order at the moment here, folks. Michael Hammond leads this one by 5.6 seconds to Carl Addo. Uh, Hammond's really cleared out in amongst this light traffic. He's been able to get through it a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier than the other boys around him. Carl addard has got by Nick, second and third. Four wide, are you kidding me? No, trouble. Two, three cars caught up in an incident there. Only one turned around. And that was that was nasty. Brady McHugh caught up in yet another incident here on the mountain. Can you believe that? It's just not his night tonight. Out of the road, light traffic, three cars around him, four into one doesn't work, especially when it's turn two at Mount Panorama. And um, the track isn't wide enough to go four wide. You saw one car on the grass there to begin with. Drama, a plenty already in the uh, production car race. It bodes well for the stock car race, I have to say. So 45 minutes, the unofficial uh, length of the race here, of course, the flag will fly. First time by the line after 45 minutes expires. 
Last time by the line, Michael Hammond had got us to 12 minutes 13 seconds. We have gone caution free thus far, which after the last couple of laps is a little bit surprising, but it's been good to see. Fast, flat out running. Mount Panorama on a Friday night. Of course, conditions set for sunrise, which is why the headlights are ablaze. And I might, I might actually make an observation here, Nick, that uh, you might be able to help elaborate on. I'm just having a look there. Where it says the time, it's locked at 5.51 a.m. So there's no sunrise, no that. It's just that the clock is frozen and stopped at 5.51. Can you explain what that's all about? Um, I believe, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe there's an option where you can just lock it in at a t certain time of day. Gotcha. I, I, know, I know for the, the stock cars, if, if we, um, the way I've set it up, if we didn't count yellow flag laps, we'll be going into the night time, so. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say, I don't mind the nighttime race or the prospect. Yeah, the but anyway, car, but I, cars don't, I don't have lights. And I don't think you'd handle it with the stock cars, no. And the light, they haven't updated the lighting around here at the moment, so um, it makes it for interesting racing. We'll see how it goes. Should be good fun regardless. Looking forward to the post-race show and getting all the, um, all the feedback from the drivers as we usually do. So hang around for that. We've still got a long way to go in this production car race though, folks. Let's update you on the running order. Um, Blake, uh, sorry, Simon Ferris sits fourth at the moment. Blake Hercart fifth. Shane Witt sixth. Daniel H, si uh, sorry, Daniel H seventh. Gary Cousins eighth. Then Tyson Thompson and Laser Dave Farrelly making up the top 10. Brady McHugh sitting down in 12th at the moment. Paul Nichols has got his way up into 14th spot. Adam, Adam Labus in behind him. And so to Chris Foley, but um, uh, Nico's got a bit of breathing space there at this point in time. He's got five seconds on Chris Polly, 12th and 13th on the racetrack. Still, uh, there are 32, there were 32 starters. There are a few cars, three laps down. And that's David Anderson and two laps down, Mitchell Heath at this point in time. Chris Kisby, along with Peter Clark, Stanley Bobby and Alan Brahoda, then also Luke Keeney and Julia Mucky are all one lap down at this point in time. So 24th and up, all on the lead lap. And uh, a good battle unfolding here. We'll see on your screen in a moment, folks, for third position in the motor race. We're looking at Simon Ferris at this point in time. Uh, actually, no, we're just behind him, I should say. We're with Shane Witt and Daniel H. Just ahead of him, there's a good battle unfolding between Simon Ferris and Blake Urquhart. So, battle for seventh, uh, fifth and uh, fourth and sixth and seventh unfolding right here right now and nick you're right on the tail of uh, of cohen adard at this point in time as well so there's battles happening everywhere in fact these two are now coming into the show we're on board with you nick actually no pressure uh he was busting to get past i let him past um and he's been mucking up so that's how i got he let he first got past me then i let him he let, yeah. too many things going through my head um i oh, know it's fine yeah, I let him pass because he was pushing hard. He mucked up. I could see it was going to happen, and I got past him again. But he's just pushing super hard, so whatever. I'll just hang on to his coattails, and we'll... As long as we're pulling away from the guys behind, I'm happy happy as. Well, that's the main thing, mate, and you certainly are at this point in time. You've got seven seconds on Blake Urquhart, Simon Ferris, and Shane Witt. In fact, uh, keep an eye on that battle behind. Um, I know we're looking at the battle for second and third at the moment. There's uh, coming out up. There's Nick behind. Then Blake Urquhart is being chased down. He's eight tenths of a second ahead of Simon Ferris and Shane Witt. So he's being mowed down at the moment. Daniel H is also within striking distance to Shane Witt. So there's a good battle unfolding there. Uh, four, fifth, sixth, and seventh at the moment. According to the Gentleman's Sim Racing Club page on the uh, iRacing website, it tells me that Michael Hammond, Shane Witt and Dave Farrelly are the top three in this championship at this point in time. 28 points from Hammond to Witt. 314 plays 286 and Dave Farrelly on 262. So I had, um, I had Nico send through a document, a Google Drive document earlier in the day, but I couldn't access it. I need permission to access it. So we'll sort that out a little bit later on and update you on anything that might be wrong from sheet to sheet but uh make sure that you get all the right information as, as regards to who's doing what in the production car series the all certs production car series here on do a drift esports fabulous shots at mcfillamy park on past skyline on down to the s's here at mount panorama so michael hammond five and a half seconds clear of uh Callum 
Cohen's under pressure from Nick. And we're watching this battle at the moment between uh, the uh, the purple and the green. How good? Actually, that's a good combination. I like those two colours. It's a combination there. This is, of course, the ongoing battle between uh, Simon Ferris, Shane with Daniel H and Gary Cousins in behind them as well. Down Conrod straight we go. Light traffic moving out of the road for these boys. And Simon, uh, sorry, Shane Witt is closing right up on Simon Ferris at this point in time as they enter the chase. Pit stops will be interesting here. Who does what when? And we're almost. Hammond's in. Even close to the ha to half race distance. Hammond's in. Is in. Hammond's in the lane. So there yep. you go. He's jumped early. Michael Hammond, the first of the pit stops. There he is on your screen there. We go back to this ongoing battle at the head of the field. Shane Weird under tremendous pressure. And Simon Ferris as well. They are putting the pressure on one another and up the inside. Goes Witt, sorry, Aish. Daniel Aish has just got by Shane Witt on the inside at Murrett's uh, Hell Corner there. You just saw it on the aerial shot, of course. Ocular, we thank them for providing the aerial coverage for our Dual Drift Esports broadcast. As the field heads up Mountain Straight one more time. And, uh, a reminder, of course, folks, to follow Dual Drift Esports on Facebook, subscribe to the Twitch page as well, follow in there. Uh, Robert Hazelbarn, of course, doing great work, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, Dual Drift Esports in 2020. In fact, the, the, the old esports has been the big winner of COVID. There's no doubt about that. There are a lot of losers out of COVID, but Dual Drift Esports and esports in general have been the big winners. Yeah. And so to the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, of course, because the interest in the product that you guys, um, I, I, I guess, promote and distribute on a weekly basis, Nick, not just in the broadcast, but just as a club in general and the events you host, it's, uh, it's never been more popular. 100% all coinciding with COVID, the broadcast, your good self. Um, we couldn't have done it with every, without everybody's help. We've, we're now a registered um, sporting club. I so did it's see all, that, it's all yes. happening, so yeah, we're all doing really well. Indeed. Now, some onboard shots here. Well, now that we've got an aerial sponsor, we needed a, an onboard sponsor as well, I think. Race Cam, um, as the Seven Network used to put it. That was Michael Porter. By gee, that car's seen better days as well. On to the main straight, he goes across the start-finish line. The, uh, the pink and black, synonymous with uh, the, the Michael Porter entries that you see across the broadcast that we bring. Uh, what, a, what a race this is turning out to be. He's sitting down in 20th at the moment, still on the lead lap. Coco's the, uh, in. Yeah, last of the cars on the lead lap. Sorry, mate. Coen Attard's in. Coen Attard's in, so that'll move you up into, in fact, a lot of cars in. Just behind him, Simon Ferris, Shane Witt, Daniel Rachel coming in as well. So pit lane, a hive of activity right here, right now. A lot of these guys on the same strategy. It's basically going to be a win and lose situation on pit road. And interesting to see that the caution flag hasn't been thrown yet and the pit stop coming before the window. I don't know what they're doing because i still got four laps left in this tank. Well, yeah, that, that well, that's the interesting thing, Nick. Did you want to elaborate on that from a technical standpoint? Are you thinking if, if the safety car gets deployed around the oh, time of the pit? You, yeah, okay, fair enough. Because oh, well, I wasn't sure because obviously they're, get, they're going in and pitting early. And you're saying you've got four laps left. Are they weighing up the risk and reward of pitting before yeah, the caution? Yeah, pit before the safety car because then they can yeah. just charge to the end. But, um, oh, look, don't do what Johnny Danger does. I'm just doing the opposite. Yep, fair enough. Run the tank out, see how many laps I get, and then I can get a better, more accurate reading on what's going on. If there were safety cars, I would have pitted, but let's just see how I go. I've still got eight seconds in front before I get to Michael Porter. And I've got 10 seconds behind me, so. So there, 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 will be, there will be a competition caution at some point. We're just not sure when that number is. So we shall wait and see. Mm. Of course, it's been one of the signature points of uh, the iRacing broadcast. We've, br uh, we've brought you right throughout the season here on Dual Drift Esports. And the, the Stock Car Championship reaches its crescendo tonight with the 25 lapper around Mount Panorama.
So, as I said, same cars as last week in the production cars, same track for both broadcasts tonight. So it's exciting stuff. As much as I love the double header aspect and going from Europe to North America or whatever the case may be, I love the aspect of running at the same circuit and as the boys have said that appears to be what we're going to try and do with the two series going forward when we bring your Friday Night Motorsport here to a drift esports. Now uh, around uh, 20 and a half minutes left on the clock here our race leader is the great man that I've been talking to Nico Pop and uh, we've got uh, Cohen Adard there in second spot. Blake Urquhart third and Simon Ferris, Daniel A. Shane Witt, Michael Hammond, the top seven at this ah. point in time. That is the caution. Oh, dear. So, look at we straight into the pits, no doubt. Are you in a position to pit, or are you on another no. lap? Just went through hill corner, okay. called called, so. Okay. Ah. So that, that does destroy your, uh, your hopes and dreams, I dare say. Yeah, oh well. That being said, there could be carnage. You could get lucky. Uh, there could be some crashing and mashing occurring off the restart. Remember, safety cars breed safety cars as a rule. That's it. But the caution has been waived, and Michael Hammond was the one that uh, deployed it just quite lit. So you can uh, take it up with him after the race, no doubt. Uh, no, he has to. He gets told a random number, and he uh, he just does it. It's just like um, in stock cars, I'll give a random number yeah. to whoever's in race control, and I'll just deploy it at that lap. So it's purely so, by lottery. Fair enough. Fair but enough. I've, no. I'm ahead of the safety car. It's told me to go around, so I'm still going flat out. So I believe well, the safety the car. Oh, wow. Okay. Looks like we're just going to keep going flat out for another two laps until we catch the safety <laughs> car. So. so does that mean you'll pit this lap or what? Uh, pits are still closed. It won't, it won't open the pits till the leader catches the safety car. Okay. All right. Expert in race analysis there from Nick. He leads at the moment from Blake Urquhart, Michael Hammond, Cohen Adard, and Daniel Leish, Simon Ferris, Shane Witt. So those guys roughly where they were heading into this caution period. And uh, in terms of in proximity to one another, I should point out, Lazy Dave Farrelly, Grant Gill, Gary Cousins making up the top 10 at this point in time. I'm not 100% aware who has and hasn't pitted. Apart from Nick, of course, because... He's uh, been quite uh, open with his uh, strategy and his uh, commentary so far this evening. Speaking of uh, open with comments, I'm looking forward to anything that um, Chris Whitaker might say tonight. He's always entertaining when we get to the stock car post-race show, so hang around for that, folks. I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Now, just having a look here on... Um... <laughs> just having a look at the comments on uh, Do Adrift Esports Facebook live stream. Um, I've just been asked what car am I driving tonight? Well, none tonight, Leon McNeil. Nice to have you on board yet again. But um, everyone has to select the same car because it's a, it's a one-make car race. So it's the Ford Mustang FR500S tonight and uh, set up identical to baseline. So in a situation like this, Nick, just for those that are new to I racing, obviously the track conditions are identical from start to finish. There's no... Um, changes there because it's set to 5:51 a.m. in the morning, no yep. sunrise, all that sort yep. of stuff. From a from a racer standpoint, it's very much when you look at a baseline setup, it comes down to driver ability more than anything else. Exactly, exactly. It's why we have uh, gone the same car, same. Oh, this is open setup, but there's not too much you can change. Yep. And same in the stock cars, we've just gone. They're all the same car, same setup for everybody. I'm just watching my 15 second lead diminish. Unlucky. Unlucky. Uh, <sighs> yeah. All that hard work and it evaporates very quickly. I was hoping everybody would get through the pit stops before they throw the safety car, but nope. No, oh, not well. today. Oh, well, it's a gauntlet you run, but anyway. Hmm. Oh, that I'm is, surprised that, that more people didn't pit later. And because it's under safety car, if it feels a hot track and um, yep. it was still green, I wouldn't have taken tyres, but because it's under safety car, well, what the hell? Fresh yep. Yeah, they do the manual. Obviously, you guys can't see it, but the animations when they finally do bring them out is manual jacks under one side and then the other side. Just like the NASCARs. So, um, yeah, man. 
Just tell me. Second leader point three. Exactly. Just like. Now, just having a look at the circuit, of course, you know, 6.213 kilometres, a mecca of Australian motorsport, most sacred, hallowed turf and special real estate anywhere in the land and one of the most revered tracks right around the world. I'm just having a look and I think if memory, if numbers serve me correctly, when you look at this being an anti-clockwise circuit, there are 14, by my count, turns to the left and nine to the right. So I, uh, I, I'm just purely looking at the track map off Wikipedia to say that. Um, it doesn't tell you on iRacing. I'm just making that, just hopefully nailing that statistic as we go along here. But uh, yeah, uh, the uh, the field tonight, 32 cars, 20 degrees, partly cloudy. That's actually a warm bath this morning in the middle of November. I don't think iRacing's quite on the, uh, the money there. I don't think it could be 20 degrees at 5.51am on any day of the year so in Bathurst. You, 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 didn't catch the, uh, you didn't catch the safety car just riding the wall then, did you? No, I didn't actually. I was looking at the, the timing monitor. Whoever's in so, there is going to have a chat with the stewards, I think. I think they'll need to. My goodness, the uh, the, the safety car... Um, it's not the first time no, we've seen the safety car run into trouble or be the subject of tr controversy at Mount Panorama. Don't I worry about that. I was about to say that. <laughs> not the first time. <laughs> no, dear oh dear. Um, what about the year that the, uh, the light bar fell off on the thing? Oh dear. Now, um... Trees all across the road at the, uh, elbow. That was 2010, yeah, Bathurst yeah. 12 hour. Absolutely. Winds are, uh, interesting to point out. Ah, oh, he... Now, you've got to appreciate the work that's gone in, ladies and gentlemen, to give you exactly, well, to a point, pretty much the same sort of cameras you see in a broadcast on television. And, uh, and Robert Hazeldine, we'll let him explain that a little bit later on, but he's put in some great work to uh, give you pretty much perfect camera angles. It's actually uh, Adam Adam Le uh, Levy's is the one. And who's Adam Levy's as well. So I'll, uh, I'll let everyone know a bit more about that later. But yes, he's done so, an excellent job. So he does he does some special cameras for you, but you get to monitor the trackside cameras. Is that right? Uh, he creates all the angles. Like he puts it all yep. in there and I, I okay. work between them. So oh, he, okay. he essentially, and I pick the cars and I, and I do a lot of the So I'm, I'm controlling them. But he's designed yep. where they sit, where they look. Uh, for example, the helicopters, the, the chopper cam, yep. where it's coming, um, I think, down the mountain. He's, he's put all that in based on what the actual uh, chopper pilot does. And he said, that the, he said to me today that chopper pilot is some sort of extreme, uh, e extreme pilot <laughs> getting so close to the trees and everything, you know. So he's, he's put all that in there, yeah. which is, is, is excellent. Um, for sure. For sure. Hey, uh, Nick, uh, I noticed that you aren't in the pit lane yet. Is that because the safety car is uh, um, letting light traffic go around or the pits haven't been open? What's going on here? Uh, sorry, there's a lot of talk going on. Um, I'm rolling a dice. Bugger it. I've stayed out now. So. <laughs> right there. We'll wait and see how that plays out for you. I'm going to um, do a bit of a Marcus Ambrose down the hill and turn off the car. Um, okay. I've still got 3.2 litres remaining. If someone can do the math, I'm doing about one and a half litres a lap. Um, and the time is quickly running out. So we've just got an extra lap on the safety car, which is a blessing. Yes. So I, will, I, I think we'll you might still be in on. trouble given it's a 45 minute race, but uh, we'll wait and see. We shall wait and see. It might just be a run the gauntlet that comes uh, back to haunt you, unfortunately, but we'll wait and see. Yeah. We've got that fingers crossed for you regardless. Oh, look, you've got to roll the dice. You've got to do something different to the leaders and um, try something new. So what the hell? I'll, um, uh, I'll, I'll look forward to re-commencing uh, that chat with Robert and Adam Lavis a little bit later on in the broadcast. It's just to give you an understanding, of course, folks, because um, there's a lot of effort that goes in to making a um, dual drift esports broadcast happen. And some of it is helped um, externally some of it is provided to us by the iRacing platform itself, so we'll let Adam and uh, Robert have a chat about that a little bit later on. 31 and a quarter minutes were on the clock last time Blake Urquhart crossed the line there. Um, Nick and Michael and Cohen Adder, Daniel H, Simon Ferris, then Shane Witt, Gary Cousins, Tyron Thompson, Laser Dave Farrelly, then Grant Gill, Paul Nichols rounding out the top 12 at this point in time, William Pym, Jonathan Turner, Chris Polly, Adam Lavis, and then Pete Matson, Josh Millard, Andrew Hayes, and then um, Andrew, uh, Andrew Skiver. 
the number 92, rounding out the uh, the top 20 there. Looking further afield, uh, D David Anderson and Mitchell Heath, forget about them. Brady McHugh's five laps down, shocker of a night. He'll be looking to redeem himself in the stock cars a little bit later on, and if not, then he'll have to try and salvage something when we come back to GT racing here next time around. The lights continue to flash on the safety car here. You can see it on your screen there. I'm waiting for them to go out. When they go out, we know that the race is going to resume. We know that Nick's going to run the gauntlet. We know that he's going to be trying to save some fuel here and also keep with the front men at the same time and keep them at bay. 10 minutes I reckon I'll do it. This is interesting, Nick, because there's some more lap traffic going around and so you might get another lap out of this yet. This safety car might just go around one more time. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, there's a lot of chat going on. Um, uh, yeah, well, look, there's, what, just on 10 minutes now to go? Yeah. I reckon uh, I reckon I can pull a top five out of this. Okay. All right. Watch this space, folks. No pit stop for Nick. And it's not a requirement to do a pit stop. It's, no, not, it's, not. it's not compulsory, is it? So it's only because of the, uh, the, the, the fuel burn factor that most people do have to come in and stop. Maybe not. Now, there's a car pulling off to the right-hand side there that you can see on your screen. Can't quite pick up who that is at uh, the Pete moment. Pete Matson. Pete Matson. okay. So Matson's in a bit of trouble. We have got a lot of cars going around to try and unlock themselves at the moment. So they've been waved around. Uh, Lights are out. Actually, that that's why I'm, I'm, I'm just getting, I'm just getting some... Um, info on our data screen here and uh, we're being told that um, quite a few cars obviously were waved around but Pete Matson was given an end of the line penalty so that would be why he's pulling over there there's nothing wrong with the car he's just got to go to the back of the queue and whether that includes all the lap cars around or whether it's just the the current queue I'm not 100% sure on that so uh, however Lights are out on the caution on the uh, safety car, so the uh, the caution flag will of the period will end at the end of this lap. We are one lap away from going back to green. Now the interesting thing is this: where we get to the line, 35 and 26. So it's been about four minutes 13 between laps. So on those numbers, you're looking at probably probably three laps, Nick. Probably yeah. three laps. Yeah, I've screwed myself. Oh well. <laughs> by, by, by the barest like of margins, it'll be yeah. like about 15 seconds or something that will sneak a third lap in here. By, however, if there's drama and the caution needs to be thrown again, it could be a Stephen Bradbury effort. So we'll wait and see. There you are on uh, on camera at the moment as well for those of you watching at home, folks. It's, uh, Nick in the bottom corner there focused very much on the job and the task at hand, which will then, of course, turn to stock cars a little bit later on. Big field gathering for the stock cars, really looking forward to getting stuck into that race uh, a little bit later on this evening. We will bring that to you commercial free here on Do A Drift Esports, Friday Night Motorsport from one of the best places in the land. And I have a very soft uh, spot and a, a long affiliation with this place purely through the fact that I got to call it home, that town, Bathurst, for uh, oh, close enough to nine years, just over in fact. It was uh, nine years and nine days or something ridiculous like that. And uh, got to call that part of the world home, very lucky to do so. And made some great friends throughout that uh, time, but obviously the, the main standout and the, the whole incentive for calling that this time originally was so that you uh, could uh, work in the media and get a media pass to events at Mount Panorama. So to be able to walk out of, on, on just a general Wednesday and see the words on the mountain from as, as close as the centre of town or from your house even, uh, it, was, it was always special. Always made the hairs on the back of the next stand up. It's a lovely part of the world and there's some good people there. But as I said to someone earlier today, I don't envy them at this time of the year. I'm so happy with the winter climate in Queensland compared to the central west of New South Wales. They had snow in the central west earlier this week. The uh, ocular chopper shows and tells the story as they head down Conrad Strait. Lights out on the safety car, getting ready for a restart. Leaderboard on the right-hand side of your screen there. We're getting ready to get back underway for uh, all certs. For LJ Hooker Gaindar, for Central Coast Subaru, 
and also for Ocular. This is the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, Friday Night Motorsport, the latest round of the production car series, ahead of the stock car finale, which is coming up in, uh, what have we got, about uh, 30 minutes from now. We've got some unfinished business here just yet. Round they come. Nick will bring us back to green. Will he back the field up or will he put the foot to the floor immediately as soon as the pace car pulls off? The, the, the restart is in his control. Let's go! From Mount Panorama, the production car race is not over yet. Nick's going to lead us back to green. But for how long? Immediately there on the inside, Michael Hammond putting the pressure on. Spin at the back. There's a car in the wall there, halfway along pit straight. Hammond goes to the lead. Nick's get, getting hung out to dry on the ribble strips there. And Colin Allard's going through as well. Daniel H, Simon Ferris, Shane Witt, they're all there. Trying to swamp him at this point in time. And Nick's in fuel conservation mode. Over the rise, down the hill. The end of Mountain Strike to Griffin's Bend. How good is this? Such great pressure motor racing at the front of the field. Because Hammond, while he's got the lead and he's got three or four car legs, he knows he's not comfortable. To the cutting. The climb to the top of the mountain. Be right on board. With our mate Nick. The wheel's hard at work. Across the top of the mountain and down. Past Reed Park, on down to McPhillamy. They'll take the left-hand curve over onto the top of the mountain past Sky One. Have a look at our trackside cam. How good is that? Again, courtesy of Adam Lavis for the time and effort that's gone into setting all that up for us. More and more cameras getting added to the coverage every week, folks, so keep tuned to do it with eSports. It's getting better and better. Around they come again. Oh, Spinner in the dipper. We've got a car in the wall. And that didn't look pleasant at all. Looks like uh, most of the field has gone through unimpeded. As they ride down Conrad Strait one more time. They'll come back to the line. I'll be interested to see how all this plays out. Because, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure how all this plays out. This could be one lap to go this time around. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> I just have to have a look at the clock when our leader comes back to the line. Because Pete Matson was showing us 41 and 29, but we know he got a rear a field penalty there. So when this leaderboard refreshes itself, no, I think you're going to have two, mate. I think you're going to have two laps, unluckily. Ah. Pete Matson was 34 seconds ahead on our time uh, sheet here. I know you can't see that at home. You've only got the leaderboard that's being shown on the left-hand side there, but the graphics and the display that I'm looking at, 41.29 for Pete Madsen, plus 34 to Michael Hammond, so that's 42 and 3. So that means that, yeah, by, by about 30 seconds, you're going to need another lap. So it's not going to work in your favour, unfortunately, at this point in time, unless someone wants to dramatically hold the field up. They've been cool hard style. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Um, between now and the end of the race, uh, I can't see it uh, not going an extra lap. But that's good news for us. And Michael Hammond continues to uh, lead this charge out of the cutting. Pete Madsen still showing as the uh, the leader there, but I'm not sure what that's all about because he was given a re an end of the line penalty there. So we shall wait and no, see I'm what that's all about. Ah, Nick's out of fuel. Can you believe that? I thought that might be the case, mate, unfortunately. Oh, well. There you are pulling up just out of the cutting. Oh. If it was about 500 metres down the road, it'd be shades of Glen Seaton. If it was 500 metres up the road, I could roll back to the start finish line. That's Proof exactly fact, right. I've done it numerous times, but anyway, 1.3 litres short apparently on my um, readout. So anyway, unlucky, unlucky. Oh well, that's what you're right. I was going to say, yeah, turn your eyes and attention to this because this is a cracking battle here. We've got uh, 
Hammond the leader. Point out of a second to Cohen Adard. Then a second back to Aish. Couple of seconds back to Ferris. He's got uh, Gary Cousins putting pressure on him and Shane Witt as well. So a lot happening here. Paul Nichols is inside the top 10. He should be eight now that you've uh, departed, but we'll see how his last lap goes. Here on the main, uh, down Conrad straight, they come now. The main drag to the fastest corner in Australia motorsport. Michael Hammond will uh, bring us back to the line. We've got one lap to go, ladies and gentlemen. Great racing here. Great on board shots as well. Out of the chase. Left. Right. Under the bridge. Another lap in the books. And it should be one to go. Yep. 44 and 29 when Michael Hammond got back to the line. Half a minute. We picked that perfectly. So this will be it, ladies and gentlemen. The flag will fly this time around. What a race it's been. Hammond's been in the class above tonight, hasn't he? Yeah, well, as, as we've seen week in, week out, he is towards the front of the field every week. So um, it was no surprise to see him at the front of this one. Indeed. Looking forward to seeing how many line up for the stock car race a little bit later on this evening. We had over 30 last week for Phillip Island. Uh, the interest for Bathurst should be a little bit higher than that, you would think. Up over the top of the mountain for the last time. Michael Hammond's going to bring it home here. He's 1.009 seconds clear of Cohen Adard here. And doing everything he needs to do to keep it on the black stuff and take the chequered flag. As they make their way around for the final time. Adard in close pursuit. You can see it. You're right on board with Adard. Through the dipper and the S's one more time. Left, right, right. Now down in two. Oh, we've had trouble at the top of the mountain as well. Three cars involved in carnage up there. We'll come back to that if we can. We're right on board with that. He's in close pursuit of Michael Hammond. He's not going to be able to do enough to get the job done here. And Michael Hammond after a couple of weeks where luck has befallen him. He will get back into the winner's circle tonight and maintain his championship lead in the All Certs Production Car Series for the Gentlemen's Sim Racing Club. From it up, Motorsport on Dua Drift Esports. Leader comes down to the last corner. Check and flag will fly. And Michael Hammond gets the job done. It's hammer time at Mount Panorama. Very nicely done. Adard in for second, the margin 2.0. Gary Cousins has done a great job. He looks like he's going to get third place. Fourth for Daniel Aish. That's exactly how that played out. Shane Witt come home for fifth. And Paul Nichols, well done to Nico. He's got through for sixth ahead of Chris Polly. Pete Matson comes home in eighth. Then Blake Urquhart and Adam Ravis rounded out the top ten in all of that. Laser Dave Farley, 11th. Jonathan Turner, Josh Millard, Andrew Hayes, and Andrew Skiver made up the order there of the top 15. We'll run through the full field a little bit later on if we get a chance to, folks. But that's the top 15 here tonight. 46 and 55, the, late, the, uh, the race time there for, uh, for Michael Hammond. I reckon he's done pretty well to bring that home. Uh, with a 225 something on the last lap there. That's quite That's impressive. That is extremely impressive. No doubt about that. So, thoughts on all of that? Obviously disappointing for yourself, Nick, but um, Michael Hammond, a class above tonight, did everything he needed to do to stay clear of Cohen Adard and out of trouble. He's, he's found trouble a few times in the recent weeks. Not tonight at all, went according to plan, and he finished the race with a 225.385, if you don't mind. In fact, uh, I'm just looking at the stats here. That His last two laps were exactly the same, identical. Yeah. 225, 385, fastest lap of the race on the last lap. He's done a bro. Yeah. Oh, look, I was just... I knew he was faster than me, so I was just happy to sit... Just glad to be actually sitting with them. So, um, him and... Uh, I can't remember who it was at the start. Um... 
so yeah, I was just sitting there with them, just tagging along. I was actually lifting off. To, I was like, well, I'm not going to get past them, so I'll lift off, say some. Um, and it nearly paid off for me, 1.3 litres short. But anyway, what can you do? Not much, unfortunately. The caution flag had just gone for, you know, half. Well, actually, no, in your case, you needed to go for a lot longer, unfortunately, because oh, you, it was a lap and a half from home. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I mean, I could have manually thrown it because I'm one of the admins of the stuff. But I thought, well, well, this is right. You could have you could have just thrown it straight after you got the restart and just brought it home under caution. Hey, trouble on the on oh, the slide down lap. No. I'll probably do the jump now. There, yes, actually, keep an there eye on this, folks. Yep. Because this is what it's all about. Just driving straight through the chase to try and and put motorsport in uh, in place of the aerial skiers at the next Winter Olympics. Have a look at this. Straight through the chase. Look at the air time on that. And the landing not too great for Michael Hammond. And that's... See, normally these guys all disconnect after the race is done. Not at Mount Panorama. They all want to go and have a chart, have a crack at the ski jump. That's fantastic. So Hammond gets the job done from Callan Adard. Gary Cousins, Daniel O'Shea, Shane Witt, the top five. Paul Nichols in for sixth. Very nicely done, sir. That was good fun. Enjoyed that. Even though I started in the pits, I accidentally started in the pits. Hey, I what happened the there? I missed the start. I was, I was, oh, you guys. He, was, anyway, he was doing the race announcements, and I thought, oh, I wonder if I need to tell him he's in the, he's going to be <laughs> starting in a sec, but no. <laughs> oh, dear. Very good stuff. Did the old um, burn from the stern. He go, job. Uh, that's trademarked, by the way. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Uh, very good stuff. Hey, uh, two point zero, the winning margin for uh, for Michael Hammond over Cohen Adard. We'll have a chat to a couple of the drivers in just a moment. We'll turn our attention very quickly then to the stock cars, of course. Uh, you know, we've had uh, a great race here. Start our day, Mount Panorama, or start our night in our case, um, Mount Panorama Bathurst, delivering the goods as it always does. We didn't get a, a grandstand finish, as they say, with a little bit of tri dri drama and trouble, I should say. I'm trying to spit two words out at once, never works. Trouble. Dribble, more like it. Um, <laughs> start, uh, we had a little bit of drama and trouble there at the top of the mountain on the last lap, but it looks as though everyone got out of that, which was a-okay. Uh, again, we didn't quite pick up who that was, but in the end, just having a look, we saw 28 cars come home in the end. Um, William Pym, the last of the uh, finishes, four laps down. Don't worry about Paul Jensen, Brady McHugh, Mitchell Heath, and also David Anderson. They were 10, 11, 14, and 15 laps down, respectively. Yeah, having a look at some race highlights now. And Michael Hammond in complete control once he got by Nick. And, and for much of the opening stanza of the race as well, before he opted to pit early... Uh, he was right there in the uh, the, the swing of uh, – and in the mix of things and in control every step of the way. Um, wasn't challenged whenever he was at the front of this race. Brady McHugh went with him early, but then that spin uh, – was it lap two out of the elbow? Really put pay to Brady's race. It just got worse from there. He ended up getting caught up in other people's incidents. And relatively clean race. Um, there were no incidents that triggered cautions, which was good to see. So it was just a matter of it was just a matter of uh, that one competition caution and Nick running the gauntlet. They were the main talking points to come out of all of yeah, I that. Was wondering what so, you mate, did you did you not put fuel in, or you were just you? I didn't stop. He didn't stop. He oh, didn't stop. He just went all the way through, hoping to make it to the end. It didn't work. I'll be. I was saving from the get go, which I'll do. Uh, just to let you guys know, in this next race, I'll be doing that as well. Very good. Uh, um, I was trying to get through all the way, Nico, without a stop, and I was 1.3 litres short. As I, I didn't even look at my um, display over to my left, which yeah, actually right, has okay. accurate numbers, but I was hoping for one more lap of caution or something, but no. Ran out going up the hill. Not to be. Yeah, one more lap of caution would have definitely got you home, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, it is what it is, and uh, just having a look down there through the order, obviously, uh, that, that pushed you down all the way to 24th position in all of that, Nick, unfortunately, but it was looking yeah. so good until then. Hero is zero. I'm happy with either or. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know which one you'd prefer. There's no doubt about that. Um, One of you want to jump out and see if there are any drivers that will come in and have a chat to us, or have we not got anyone available? Yeah, I've got to do some laps anyway uh, on this NASCAR. I right. used to change my mind uh, from a stock car to a NASCAR. Or sorry, yeah, a road car to a NASCAR. 
I was going to say, I'm just having a look in the iRacing chat room. It doesn't look like there's too many actually there no, no, ready no, to have a chat to us, that. unfortunately. So that's that's then is that for the production car portion of the evening, folks. We've all got to do a little bit of a reset here to get back going in terms of joining, uh, leaving one session, joining another. But we can do that while staying on air with you this week because uh, there's no updates or anything else, any of that rubbish that has to be attended to, which is really, really good for us. Uh, it's been, um, yeah, a, a great night and a, a, a great race. And well done to Michael Hammond getting the job done. We'll come back and rehash over the results of that a Gents, little bit I've later on. I have to go. Nick, well done. And, uh, well, yeah, better luck next time, essentially. Better luck in try, the stock Try and car. catch me under a safety car. Goes well. well. We will do our best, mate. Nico, are you running the uh, stock car or are you staying with me? Mate, I'll be in uh, race comms, but I can uh, I can probably do both, but we'll see how we go. So um, I, I've got to go and do some stuff now and I'll uh, I'll be back. All right, no worries. Looks like it's just me. Apologies in advance, folks. Uh, taking you through the next uh, portion of the proceedings here. And, of course, we are turning our attention. You'll see it on your screen shortly. To all the action from the uh, the Mount Panorama Circuit in Bathurst. There are... Oh, I'm just having a look here. There are 25 drivers uh, logged in for this one at the moment. I'll, um, I'll be interested to see if that field grows now that the production car race is finished. We still have around 15 minutes of qualifying to run before we get stuck in to... Uh, racing here. And a reminder that uh, this championship is well and truly alive. Glenn Postlewaite should wrap it up tonight unless disaster should befall him, in which case Chris Whitaker will be looking to come through and clean up the chocolates. Been uh, quite an entertaining series, of course. Postlewaite's been on a, a pretty dominant run. Up, up stage last week, by a fast finishing Callum Watmore at Phillip Island. Chris Whitaker grabbed a win earlier in the series as well. But for much of the time that I've been commentating with these guys, and this is now the eighth week, Fossil Fate has been the man to beat. Eight, uh, eight weeks, I think it's five wins out of the seven with the eighth race still to come, of course, uh, tonight. And it's 25 laps, uh, this one. So around Mount Panorama, that's going to take you... Uh, Upwards of 150 kilometers, 155 kilometers tonight's race on the 6.213 kilometer um, Mount Panorama circuit there. And uh, Rob, just uh, help me out here while we uh, fill in some time because obviously uh, I'm still loading some on track um, graphics and the like. Uh, everything going very well from the Dual Drift Esports department. If people want to like, subscribe, follow the action. What can they expect when the motor racing isn't on, mate? Well, we've got a we got a bit on. I don't think there's ever going to be no motorsport on. It seems to be. Well, that's good. The thing that everyone wants. Uh, I think that's what happens when my main uh, Facebook friends list is pretty much everyone from uh, Queensland Raceway and everywhere. Um, so we'll Correct. have lots of lots of motorsport on there. We've got a few series. Um, I have been contacted by some uh, American series that want to run. So. We can get a few international sort of series going as well. Um, I am looking at running some other motorsport stuff like um, Assetto Corsa. There's some drifting, some rally, dirt rally, just different programs. So that, And I was, I was looking at driving myself for some of those so people can jump on. They can jump on with me and, and have some fun or just watch me, you know, roll cars into trees. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Um, we're also looking at, we've got some StarCraft 2. I know a lot of the people watching this probably uh, not their scene, but if they are by any chance into strategy games, uh, StarCraft 2 is one of the, well, is the original, one of the original esports that actually kicked everything off and had the big prize money and everything before anything else ever did. Um, so we do have some tournaments coming up for that that I'll be a part of and I will be streaming. Um, and I am looking at getting back into that myself. I'm just trying to retrain my hands so that my muscles in my hands can do the things they need to do. Because I got old yep. and they don't move the way they used to. And I always thought that was a joke when people said that. Um, but no, it's true. <laughs> it certainly is. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't realize until I uh, on, until I just had a look here uh, on, on our uh, calendar. Um, of, of course, the, the race that I wasn't here for was Summit Point. That was uh, back at the start of April. But I've been with you guys since then for Road Atlanta, um, Spa, 
Gilles Villeneuve Circuit, Montreal, Canada, of course, the Daytona uh, road course, most sport. Then, of course, Watkins Glen now last week for the pile and this week Bathurst. Stock cars, looking forward to what might unfold here as I launch the uh, the iRacing server and join the feed from Mount Panorama. 25 cars already out there in the session. There, there is still, still time for people to join in, of course, and that is expected to happen. I think anything less than 30 would be a little bit disappointing given that the stock cars have been the, uh, the headline act on a Friday night and that this is the headline championship race, of course. Um, and and there's such prestige and tradition around Mount Panorama, and any chance to drive a car there, be it virtually or in, in real life, people usually jump that. We're looking forward to seeing what Nico and uh, and Paul provide uh, in terms of um, the uh, the entertainment factor over the next hour and a half here. And don't forget a full post race show coming up as well. But no, thanks to thanks to Rob for letting us know exactly what you can expect as far as Dual Direct Esports is concerned. We're here for LJ Hooker Game Day, Central Coast Subaru, and also the the great team from All Certs bringing you the uh, the production car race, and uh, Ocular bringing you all the action from the sky when we go racing in both our uh, production cars and stock cars on a Friday night, and also the GTs on a Monday night. And we're looking forward to GT racing again on uh, this coming Monday night. I memory uh, is having a brain fade at the moment. I've uh, forgotten where we're heading with that, but. Monday night, that will be a lot of fun. I think it's far for memory. 45-minute um, race there, similar to what we've been seeing with production cars and, of course, the previous um, GT races. And uh, Jeff Connell still the championship leader there at this point in time and uh, a lot of pressure on um, Brady McHugh now that he's the first back-to-back winner in the series to see if he can uh, go and uh, complete the hat tricks. So a lot to be excited about there. Pictures coming in from Mount Panorama. You should have uh, some images on your screen shortly as well, folks, courtesy of Do A Drift Esports, and I look forward to getting the director's cut of that in just a moment. It's interesting, isn't it? Normally when we're on air at a broadcast capacity, we're, we'll have a director in our ear and we won't be communicating with them on air, whatever we say to them, you won't hear. But uh, esports is a little bit different because we're... Thank you, Rob. Right on cue. Because we're in different studios in different parts of the country and in different suburbs within Ipswich, in Rob's and my case. So we, uh, and we don't have that technology to be able to jump out, jump in and talk privately, if you know what I'm saying. So oh, we hope like, you're enjoying that I little like, extra insight. Just like to be involved, Zach, that's all. <laughs> well, well, this is right too, yeah. Like people to know I'm here. <laughs> oh, no, we haven't done that. Don't worry about that. Um, now, this is Mount Panorama. This is Bathurst. And the first car we pick up there should be and is the 95 of Glen Possifway as they head into the cutting once more. Looks like we've got uh, late afternoon conditions set for this one, and that is indeed the case. So we've gone to the opposite end of the day. So whoever set up the production car race set it for 5.51 a.m. This race is going to launch at around 5 p.m., track time mount panorama sunday november 15 25 laps the race distance of course it, it says one hour i'm praying that we don't go time certain we shouldn't go time certain unless there's a cluster of safety car interventions but we're not expecting that a reminder of course the rules here state that unlike normal stock car racing where cautions get chucked very freely very friendly we won't have cautions in the last 10 laps of the race as you see the 375 end up in the wall there heading out of um the elbow <laughs> i just caught a glimpse of sam collins having a big moment through the uh the s is going into the dipper as well so here we go again do a drift esports on a friday night and Mount Panorama, the venue. It's been a long time since we've seen stock car racing here. They did feature on a couple of occasions as part of the Super Touring 1000 back in 97, 98. And this year, of course, TA2 Muscle Cars will head back to Mount Panorama for their own category race this time, rather than being as part of a combined sports events field for the Bathurst 12 hour. Um, and they will also run a 100-kilometre race. We're going 55 kilometres further tonight. 
and looking forward to all of that. Don't forget to signal out and say good day if you're tuning in wherever you're listening and watching from around the world. Carmen Adard just uh, publicly admitting on the Do A Drift uh, eSports Facebook page that that was a fun race, the production car race we just brought you, and Hammer Time's just too good. That he is indeed. Looking forward to having a chat with quite a few of our drivers tonight. Once the racing is done here, can't see too many of them online at the moment, actually, so that's, a, that's concerning. A little bit disappointing. But, um, in fact, we, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I only just saw that we do have some guys in the production car chat room, but we didn't get a chance to uh, to chat to them either, of course. With, uh, yeah, I only just noticed that too, Paul. We didn't get a chance to chat to them, obviously, due to uh, time constraints turning it around, but also with uh, Nico having commitments in race control and uh, Nick having the uh, the desire to get in and have a race tonight and do the, the old burn from the stern. He's taking it very seriously as well. He's telling us not to talk to him during the race unless it's a safety car. Um, so he's um, he's committed to going out there tonight and giving it a real red hot crack and he'll want redemption after running short fuel wise in the production car race as well. Hey, uh, Nico, where, are we expecting one or two stops for the stock cars here tonight? Definitely one stopper for sure, but um, mm. based on our history, it might be a two stopper. So um, I'll uh, I'll have a chat to Nico and just find out. But definitely one stopper could be two. Okay, we'll keep an so, eye on that. Thank uh, you, mate. Top tire strategy as well, because these things will certainly uh, chew through the the tires. So. Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. So, no, congratulations uh, once again to all the production car boys. More production car racing to come Friday Night Esports, Friday Night Motorsport, Dual Drift Esports, I should say, in the coming weeks. So stick around for that. We'll be back next week with more production car racing. And I think we'll, we'll, I think we'll still have the double header aspect of it on a Friday night too, folks, because yeah, that's the, plan, yeah. the, the plan is to put some special one-off events in there, whether they be uh, in the stock cars or whether they be in different cars and different circuits. I don't know what the boys are planning, but we're looking forward to getting some insight into that at the end of the broadcast as well. So, yeah, 5 o'clock race start here. That'll make it nice and fun. And uh, that brings us up to around, uh, well, we've got seven and a half minutes left in this session, so it'll be about 10 past eight. Uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time on a Friday night when we get this run underway. Just having a look at the time so far. Quite a few cars yet to, uh, excuse me, register a qualifying time. Yeah, I think, 13 uh, cars, in fact, yet to qualify uh, at this point, Paul. I think they, they look, um, if you have one off track, um, obviously it deletes your qualifying time. So if you yep. just touch the wall, even if it's a 0x, we call it, <clears> which you, you might knock yep. a mirror or um, just go on the grass a little bit, you'll lose your time for that. So we might find quite a few drivers uh, not, not setting a time. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, the old uh, start from the end treatment. And, and let's be honest... A one-hour race, compulsory pit window, possibility of, you know, obviously more than one caution with safety cars playing a part, uh, crashes for the, uh, the cars around you. There is the possibility that someone could win this from the back of the field. It, it wouldn't be the first time. certainly won't be the last time. Um, but obviously grid position is paramount in importance for some of these guys here tonight, given everything that was seen throughout the series thus far. More times than not, it has been won from the pointy end of the field. One possible way to 210.08 so far. He's fastest lap. Chris Whitaker, Michael Schreier, Bretton Hobson, and Cal Watmore. Red top five. Daniel Ackland is sixth, and John O'Hill is seventh. Brady McHugh, Brendan Whitaker, Reese Goldfinch, Daniel Collins, and Brendan Jackson make up the top 12. Nick Windsor, Scott Griffiths, and Warwick Sharp, the 15 to set a qualifying time thus far. Um, now, let's just have a look. Glenn Postlewaite leads. 353 points players, Chris Whitaker 339 and Cal Watmore 274. Benny Snell on 273 and Trent Lavis on 265. Brock Payne just behind them ahead of Samuel Collins. John McLaughlin, Brendan Whitaker and Kester Ward making up 
a top 10. No John McLaughlin tonight. He's devastated that he can't be racing, but we may see him uh just viewing the event at somewhere at some point during the evening reminder of course full post race show coming up production car racing back on monday night as well <laughs> so Glenn Possilweight's just punched out a 209.854. First one of the nines in qualifying. He was fastest in practice. He was the only one of the nines in practice. 209.87 as well. So, big, big difference. Big margin, big gap between first and last here at this point in time. Eight seconds, in fact, between first and 15th on the grid. And, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I quite like the fact that we've got an in-race reporter for the second week in a row. We've got Nick running the, the stock car tonight. A bit like Sunday of a fortnight ago when we ran the Indy cars. Oh, sorry, no, Sunday of just this week gone. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, where we were only able to check in with him during the, the, the safety cars. Um he normally has been running the prod cars, commentating the stock cars tonight, doing both. And uh, and that's something that we fully support. And it's great to see him on the grid. But again, it's that appeal of Bathurst. If the pre opportunity presents itself, if you're set up, ready to go, you'd be silly not to say yes to it. So Nick's on double duty. And that's one of the reasons why we're... Um... Yeah. He's actually on a flyer at the moment, Rob, if you uh, can get around to uh, Nick. I was going to say, that's one of the reasons why everyone's um, going to be stuck listening to us just for the night here, you and me, Nico. So, the car 99. That's not too bad. Yeah, we found him now uh, coming over the top of the mountain. So he hasn't down the hill. time yet, so this is, uh, we haven't got much time left, so this is really his last opportunity, I think. Have a look at the, uh, the ocular shots going down through the S's and into the dipper. Now down into Forest Elbow. Nick's on a flyer, all right. I'll be interested to see what the split times are. It's interesting because we don't, we wouldn't normally associate the stock cars with a track like this, but that's been the great thing about this iRacing series is we've been able to watch stock cars run on circuits where they wouldn't normally be seen. And even this week, the real world stuff is, has announced that they're going back to Nashville for the first time in years which is uh, a quite, a, quite an exciting prospect, and that's happening later this month. We've got uh, Scott Griffiths in trouble out of the cutting at the moment. Nick's coming. Oh, big one at the top of the mountain. Brady McHugh's gone in big time at the top of the mountain and on automatic reset for him. Nick's going to slot himself in where, I wonder. Now, I haven't got a time coming through for Nick, so he must have, yeah, must have, he must have been just allowed at some point there, which is quite disappointing and frustrating for him. No doubt. Well, he said he was going to uh, do the uh, burn from the stern, so it uh, looks like he will have to. We've got uh, how much time we got left of uh, quality? We've got a uh, minute 38, so... Not enough. He may, he may get enough because it normally is a little bit of a gap. Um, so he may get enough time because he crossed the start-finish line, so we'll see. Yeah, this is true. So keep an eye on Nick. He'll have about 30 seconds to get back to the line. He may just be able to do it. Yeah, shout out to uh, Nick's sponsors, Bailey Leonard's. Thanks for their support. That's one of the great things. A lot of these guys that do have sponsors, be they Real World or Sim, have found a way to incorporate their sponsors onto their livery throughout the course of the series, Paul. It's been good to see. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's a great avenue for them to, you know, showcase their skills and also get a bit of broadcast on for their sponsors. Um, you know, it's a community-based thing. Uh, we're, we're a not-for-profit club, which... Um, we were today uh, officially incorporated through ASIC as a not-for-profit organisation. So yes, great congratulations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we put this together to be a community-based uh, sim racing club. So, it, I mean, sim racing is now considered a sport internationally. So um, why not have a club? Well, this is right. Absolutely. And, and, and as we detailed during the production car race, mate, while you were so... Uh, Hard at work concentrating there, and we'll come back and talk to you about that in a moment. Um, sim racing and indeed the gentleman sim racing club and do a drift esports, they've all been big winners of COVID, haven't they? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think we've done it together as a community based, uh, you know, a, you know partnership. Uh, obviously, with Dual Drift and yourself, uh, the broadcast has certainly attracted a lot of people to our club, which is fantastic. Um, and I think together we can uh, certainly grow sim racing um, and make it as professional as possible. I mean, we've, we've seen some stuff on uh, some of the E-series that you uh, you go, really, is that that's really not what we're about. Um, we try and uh, make sure that the racers understand that we want to race as, as real life. I mean, if you damage the car, there's a 10 grand bill. Let's try and treat it like that. It looks like uh, Nico is going to be burning from the stern because yep. he just pulled up at Murray's corner shy of the checkered flag. Checkered flag is waving. The session is done. And it looks like another pole position for Glenn Possilwaite. Brenton Hobson, second fastest on the grid there. Michael Schreyer, Chris Whitaker, Cal Watmore, Daniel Acklin, the top six. Then John O'Hill, Brady McHugh, Brendan Whitaker, and Reese Goldfinch. Sam Collins having a spin going through the dipper as well. Brendan Jackson, Nick Windsor, Scott Griffiths, Warwick Sharp, and Goran Barvik made up the 16 that registered at the time. And a lot of drivers burning from the stern. Hammer Time's having a run tonight. Todd Parks, Adam Lavis. Stephen Robertson, Nick uh, will be in there as well in the 99. Brock Payne, Trent Lavis, Paul Jansen, Kester Ward. Those three always burn from the stern, don't they? Lavis, Lavis, and Ward. And now O uh, pops in there with them as well. Urquhart, Skiver, Polly, and Cook will make up our field here. Just having a look, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. That's 13 drivers that haven't recorded a qualifying time. That gives us, if all of them take the start, that's 29 that'll take the start. Not the big field that we're hoping for, but big enough to make it interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, as you said, yeah, I mean, you could certainly win this from the rear. If you just took it easy for the first five or six laps and, um, uh, you know, got round, no incidents, no accidents, um, yeah, you certainly win it from the rear. Certainly could. And uh, quickly, Paul, we should say well done, mate. Uh, a, a great drive from yourself. We didn't see much of you on our screen. We were too focused on the battles that were happening in and around you, but a great drive to come through the field. To be, I think it was sixth in the end, wasn't it? That's correct. Yeah, sixth. Hmm. Yeah, yeah nice done. Yeah, I love that car. Um, I, I do the uh, PDC event once a month, and um, I've driven that car many times around. Uh, it's really enjoy. It's a fun car to drive once you get a handle on it. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's good. And and what was uh, just to uh, reiterate for the people that missed it last week? What was the reason for maintaining the well the continuity going? Uh, obviously, different circuit this week. That same car as last week. That hasn't been something that's been common for the production car portion of the championship, has it? No, I just thought we, we haven't really. I, we've only run the Mustang once this season, so it was really, I think, a good uh, good opportunity to to Australian tracks. Let's do uh, Oran Park and Bathurst. Same car. Um, yeah. yeah. I've just got to do some race control stuff. I'll be back in a moment. No worries, mate. And we look forward, obviously, to more production car racing coming your way next Friday night here on Do a Drift Esports. Getting ready for a start here, ladies and gentlemen. Mount Panorama Bathurst. Always exciting. It always delivers something special. There's the uh, the shot of the latter half of Conrad Strait looking down into Caltex Chase. We were looking up into Caltex Chase over the Armour Royal Bridge there a few minutes ago. Now we're looking down into the chase, the fastest point in Australian motorsport. Trackside cameras, as Rob pointed out, set up by Adam Lavis for us tonight. He's nailed pretty much all of them, let's be honest. It looks pretty much the same as the broadcast you see in October, and that's what we like to to see, and we like to be able to try and deliver that. So don't be fooled. You're not watching the real thing. It is virtual stuff, but it, it looks as good as the real thing. There's no doubt about that. Course car on the circuit now. Field lining up behind. Let's have a look at the grid here because it is a belt up. Glenn Possilweight, Brenton Hobbs in the front row of the grid. Possilweight, of course, starting from pole position, the man to beat the championship leader. Michael Stray, Chris Whitaker, Cal Watmore, Daniel Ackland, then John O'Hill and Brady McHugh make up the uh, the top eight. Down to Brendan Whitaker, Reese Goldfinch, and then Samuel Collins, Brendan Jackson, Nick Windsor, and Scott Griffiths take us through to row uh, seven and position number 14. Warwick Sharp and Goran behind them. The rest of the field will be... I guess um, it's hard to say how they're going to be uh, balanced out here. Will it go on qualifying? Oh, sorry, will it go on practice times? Will it go on random luck of the draw? I'm Actually, not yeah, exactly it goes sure. On, um, it goes on I rating normally. So your I rating okay. is where you agree if you don't qualify. Okay, thanks for that, Paul. So we'll sort that out for you as the race goes on because there are 14 drivers here, or 13 drivers at the very least, that have not... Um, 
registered a time here. In fact, I'm just having a look at that now. It'll be Hammond and Nick on the uh, ninth row. Trent Lavis and Todd Parks, it's saying, on the 10th row. On the 11th row, Paul Jensen and Adam Lavis. On the 12th row, Chris Polly and Kester Ward. So Lavis, Lavis and Ward starting one behind the other. That'll be fun. Uh, position 25 takes me back up the field to Angus Cook. Brock Payne alongside him, then Blake Urquhart. Then Andrew Skiver. And 29th is Stephen Robertson. So a couple of names there that aren't familiar to some and, aren't, uh, and, uh, and are new to others as well. And uh, all in all, great to have so many people enter the uh, the last event of the Stock Car Series. Glenn Possibly has been the man to beat. He will remain the man to beat here. You would think the only man in the 209s in the qualifying run. 6.213 kilometres, 23 turns, 14 to the left, 9 to the right. We worked that out earlier in the evening. Such a rich history in world motorsport, not just Australian motorsport. 25 laps. Therefore, making the race distance 155.325 kilometres. And when the lights go green, we go racing here, folks. Out of the chase, the aerial shot for Ocular shows and tells the story. The car's lining up. They'll be under the control of Glenn Postlewaite, who'll bring the field under the bridge and down to green for the first time. Friday Night Motorsport from Australia's holy grail of motorsport. The best 6.213 kilometres of motor racing will stay anywhere in the land. The stock car finale is green. Glenn Postlewaite leads the field away in Cleveland in the first quarter. He moved across the block, the move from Brenton Hobson. And Winnick is trying to get down the inside. Trouble of one. Winnick has gone round. And he's sitting in the middle of the track. Let's hope he doesn't get collected and crunched. No, he doesn't. Everyone's done a pretty good job to avoid that. But Chris Winnicker is sitting in the back of the field right off the get-go here. That's a defining moment. We've said going into the start of the race that if Possum Wake finished, he's the champion. If he didn't, it was open for Chris Whitaker. And the start of the race has worked out exactly in the opposite way that Whitaker would have liked it to. He wouldn't like Glenn Possum Wake to crash to lose the championship, but he'd like, of course, to win the championship himself. It's a double-edged sword, there's no doubt about that. Up to the top of the mountain for the first time. On board with Glenn Possum Wake, let's hear him roar. All right, G, look at the lead, he's opened up already. Down over the skyline for the first time. Then we'll flick it right, left, and right again. Through the S's, then the long drop. Left into the dipper, right out of there. And then down to 16, 17, and 18. Forest elbow is turn 18. That brings us back to Conrad straight. For the first time. And 25 lap race, we've got through relatively cleanly on lap one. I was just having a look, it was Michael Schreyer and Brendan Hobson caught up in the incident with Chris Whitaker. It looked as though Whitaker just tried to squeeze down between Hobson yeah, and I, Schreyer, I, and it just didn't work for him. Uh, he, he actually lost a bit of traction going into the corner and yep. slid a little, little bit. I, no, no intent in that accident, it's just a racing incident. So. That's what I thought as well. Yeah, it didn't look like there was any drama no. or, or, or um, argy-bargy, if you like. And very well done yeah. to all the drivers behind who, mm. who amazingly avoided that. So good on him for holding his brakes, and um, that, was, that was fantastic by all the drivers. Indeed. Uh, again, I advise there will be a language warning uh, posted before we bring Chris Whitaker into the chat room a little <laughs> bit later on the evening, folks. Before he comes in. 100%. Now, across the line, poor bloke. Uh, one lap in the books, folks. An interesting note, our good mate Nick's got up into 14th spot in all of that, so he's gained four spots on lap one. And uh, he's uh, gained... He's gained, and Hammond's lost out. In fact, it looks as though... I'm just having a look here. There are 23 cards that have taken the start. No Hammer, no Brock Payne, no Blake Urquhart, no Andrew Skibber, no Angus Cook, and no Stephen Robertson. Not sure what the story is there. Disappointing though for Brock Payne to not take the start this evening. Out of the cutting. 
And they climb to the top of the mountain for the second time. They're following the 185 of Nick Windsor under pressure from Brenton Jackson in the 97. They head up over the rise. Past Reed Park, on down to McPhillamy. Not a huge crowd in there. It's, that's actually about the crowd you'd expect at about the six hour weekend. And that's the weekend that this is set to, ladies and gentlemen. It's not packed like you'd normally see in October. So fans on their toes and most of them appropriately dressed as well. We're seeing the, uh, a mix of winter and summer attire for this time of the afternoon. Track temperature, I'm just having a look at the stats here going into the race, folks, as they come into the elbow one more time. Uh, of course, 27, um, 27 degrees track temperature. 27 degrees, so it's maybe a little bit too warm for pants, I will say that much. 80 and ambient, but, yeah. Yeah, 18 ambient, uh, 27 for the track, 18 ambient. So yeah, actually, that's not too bad at all when when uh, you think about it. Um, and so you head down into the chase one more time. Um, 18 degrees for 10 past five on a spring afternoon. No wonder people are running up in Bathurst. It is a cold place at times. There's no doubt about that. Down the inside, Cal Watmore. Great move. I'm Michael Schreyer, goes to second. Shreya looks to respond on the inside and will run up the hill corner now. But he doesn't. In fact, he gets hung out to dry. And the 88 comes through. Brenton Hobson in the third spot. So what more in the second? Hobson the third. Shreya back to fourth. And the pursuit for Glenn Possible begins. Two and a half seconds. He's advantage already at the top here. Lap three of the car race. Do a drift esports Friday night motorsport. And uh, the other point we didn't make with the crowd there, Paul, as well, not a lot of social distancing going on there at the moment either, which uh, is a, hopefully a sign of things to come. If that, we're racing in the future here. November 15 is what the date's been set to for our racing tonight, a Sunday afternoon of what will be that the International Weekend. Hopefully social distancing isn't a factor when we get the mountains in November. Across the hill one more time. Yeah, look, I hope so. Look, um, based on the numbers coming uh, from uh, the health department, I think we're uh, on a good track, so uh, hopefully that'll be the case. Exactly right. Over the rise. Now, track temperature is an interesting talking point. The fact that it is so cool um, at 27 degrees and the ambient 18, does that bode well for the tyre wear for these guys, or is that still going to be a pretty big talking point throughout the hour? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the power of these cars, obviously rears are certainly going to take a punishing around here. Um, I think we had about 50 or 60% track use, so that makes a difference to the, the grip, obviously. Um, but the amount of power these cars have, obviously going to burn up new tyres pretty quickly. Um, so, yeah, it depends when the safety car comes out, whether they uh, don't change tyres at the, the, maybe the first stop, and um, we'll see how we go. Uh, very interesting. I think it's going to be a really good strategy pull up the front there. Well, and the other interesting strategy thing too, as we watch Watmore come into the chase again, under pressure from Hobson still, as they make their way out of the chase, into turn 22 on the run down under the bridge to turn 23. You see the Ridges Hotel there on the right-hand side. Great. We in jump back a couple of cars. Yeah. Terrific yeah. in-car shots. Um, I'm just waiting to see who's moved their way up nicely through the field here. I think um, Nick's still sitting down in 13 at the moment so he's doing all right just trying to pick up the rest of the field as they come across the start finish line one more time move here on the inside the 375 of Ackland on the 79 of Brendan Whitaker and job done John O'Hill just ahead of them in the 66 and Michael Schreyer is of course under pressure from uh, well putting trying to put the pressure on trying to go with Brenton Hobson just up in front of them so you're following the battle between Whitaker and Ackland and the 375 has got the job done. Into six spot he goes. I don't know if you know, Zach, um, Brenton Hobson's a fairly big YouTuber. has his own uh, yep. YouTube channel and Twitch channel. Um, and great of him to join. It's a very, very good driver of uh, anything that's quite slippery. So he's got a lot of dirt, uh, mm. has done some international races and um, it's done very well. So uh, it's good for him to jump on board with the uh, Gentleman's Racing Club. Indeed, you're on board with, I think that was Brendan Whitaker just running wide into the uh, cutting there, but he gathered it up and he didn't lose a spot. That was important. Oh, it's Haley across the top of the mountain. It's hanging out. It's making it tough for these guys at the moment. Oh, boy. They head up over McPhillamy, uh, over uh, Reed Park and on to McPhillamy over across Skyline now. That was the 185. 
of uh, Nick Windsor actually that we're riding with. I couldn't tell if it, from the aerial shot for Ocular, uh, for Ocular whether it was uh, Whitaker or Windsor, but it was Windsor. He had that thing out sideways and skating all over the place across the top of the mountain. Very lucky, good car control to gather it up and keep it on the black stuff and not run into trouble. And therefore, if he was to run into trouble, it would have put Nick in, uh, in strife as well because he's right there on his tail now looking to put a move on as they head down Conrad straight. In fact, it's Pretty almost good. as though, yeah, it's almost as though Windsor just conceded that and said, right, you're faster off you go, Nick, thanks. But Nick's up to P11. He might be even up to P10 when he goes past the start finish line, I'd say so. Yeah, it will be interesting to see how all that plays out. Trent Lavis in behind them as well. So Nick, uh, Nick pop up into position at number 11. So they come down across. Well, they will come across the start finish line this time around. We've gone back to the top of the mountain. I'll pick up who we're riding with in just a moment. The um the other point I was going to make, Nico, when when you're talking about um the the, the one or two pit stops, are we looking at just a one stop tonight, or do you think because of the tire wear it might be two? Yeah, look, it could be two. And I'm not sure of the fuel. I haven't actually got the fuel numbers, so I'm not sure. Uh, we we'll definitely uh, definitely have uh, we know one stop, but it may be two, uh, and it will depend on whether they take tires at both. But they might do rears only, so. Yeah, interesting to see. I'm, I'm not sure the actual fuel number. I didn't talk to Nick about the fuel number. So, um, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens. And, of course, it will depend very much, I guess, on where the uh, the caution falls as well. That will be a big telling factor in a lot of race Absolutely. strategies tonight. Yeah. I love the 7-Up. Actually, that 7-Up livery, that was being run by the 24, Adam Lavis. Love that. I only say that because I've got the sponsor's product right in front of me at the moment. <laughs> so I, I didn't have any water in the fridge, so I thought, oh, yeah, seven of them, dude, that'll be fine. Um, coming into the broadcast booth tonight. Well done to Adam Lavis. Nicely done. Um, now, back through the uh, the dip up on the run down into... That is, of course, Forest Elbow one more time. And just have a look there. It looks as though Brendan Hobson's got by Carl Watmore. The 88's got by the 36. That's You're looking at Hobson in front of you. You're riding on board with Watmore. So uh, Hobson has got by Cal Watmore there. That's big. That's a big talking point because um, Watmore was the four man last week. And while whether these guys are battling and holding each other up, it's just making Glenn Possible's job all that easier at the moment as he continues to lead the race and does so by nearly four seconds. He's coming across the line now to complete lap four. Actually, lap five, I should say. My apologies. That's my bad. Lap five here at Mount Panorama. And Glenn Possevate leads this 11 laps in the books. 4.1 the margin. First to second. Hobson, Watmore, Schreyer, then John O'Hill, Daniel Ackland, Brendan Whitaker, Sam Collins, Reese Goldfinch, then Brendan Jackson, they're the top 10. Nick's just outside in 11th. Looking forward to the caution. We'll check in with him during that. Lap 6 of 25. Right here, Mount Panorama, Friday Night Motorsport, Do a Drift Esports. They head to turn two. We're on board back on the main straight. I'm just trying to pick up who we're with at the moment. That's the 185 of Nick Windsor again. As he uh, exits Hell Corner. A little bit cleaner than what he was going across the top of the mountain earlier in the broadcast. And uh, we jump further back in the field now. Chris Whittaker's done well. He's back up to uh, P12. He has. The 41 we've got on our screen there is Scott Griffiths. So, yeah, Chris Whittaker back up to 12th, as you say, uh, Paul. And that's a, that's a good run from him. He's 25 seconds off the lead, though. That'll be the aggravating uh, factor for him tonight. He'll be a little bit aggrieved at that. Again, he's on mis Oh, speaking of mistakes, you're on board. Turn one. The green and gold has spun around. Again, couldn't quite pick up the number because oh, of uh, because of where it was. It just had the, the pit wall there blocking it. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll try and correct that at the moment. Looked like a two at the start. So that might have been the 23 of Warwick Sharp. In fact, I think it might have been. The 23. So Warwick's had another spin round. He was a minute behind the leaders yeah, going into this lap. Sharp, yeah. um, Cal Watmore is uh, still sitting third in this car race at the moment, but he's closely pursuing Brenton Hobson, trying to stick with him, actually. 
We go back to Daniel Ackland, though. That's who you just had on your screen there, folks. The ocular aerial shot shows and tells the story. He's chasing, this is Ackland, chasing John O'Hill at this point in time. And there's the next battle up the road, just going through Murray's Corner now onto the main straight and level up in the books. So, uh, ah, now this is interesting. Glenn Possilfate's in the pit lane, I think. Either that or he's come unstuck somewhere. Because Brenton Hobson's taken the lead of this car race. Now, I'm just not he's... sure where Glenn Possilfate's gone in all of that, whether he's in the pit lane or... He's, he's, uh, he may have had an internet connection issue, I'd say. Oh, no. Would you believe that? That Hey, that that is game-changing. That is championship-defining. Because Chris Whitaker, if he, if he can avoid internet oh, drama... He's back on track, he's back on track. Right. He's I was going to say, he could, he could be in the, in the box to win the championship. But no, he's back on track there. I'm just not sure whether that was a pit stop or... No. It we'll have to try and find that out. Just, uh, his, his, uh, by looking at his ping, I can see people's uh, internet connection and his ping's quite high. That means that uh, he's having a bad internet connection, so it can drop out quite occasionally. So, <laughs> so that'll make for a frustrating night at the office for him. There's no doubt about that. Oh boy, I thought that was I thought that was a game changer right there. Not quite, not quite. Brenton Hobson, Cal Watmore, Michael Strayer, Daniel Ackman, bring this down the hill again. How good's the shot through the dipper? How good was that? Now nah, Adam Adam Lavis gets my driver of the day already because of the way he set up the cameras around. He was done a superb job of that. I know it has nothing to do with driving whatsoever. I'm just going to put it a vote in regard to it. Yeah, and Glenn Glenn Fossilthwaite's uh, internet connection is getting better, which is good. So it could have been just a short term or short failure. Sometimes uh, modem might fail, not fail, but they have a, an issue. So uh, at, at the moment, it's okay. Okay. Yeah, I had. I, you you will know, Paul. You were with me at the time. We had an internet yeah. connection here issue here at the start of the broadcast as well. So. It's one of those things out of your control, you know. In, oh, absolutely. In, in uh, this format of racing, um, your internet sometimes can drop out. And, um, you know, it's very disappointing, particularly if you're in the lead like Glenn's doing at the moment. Um, but his, his internet's come back. It looks pretty good at the moment. I was going to say, they're the things that annoy you the most when it's something totally beyond your control. Absolutely. Brandon Hobson has uh, come into the pit lane. He's stopped. Uh, he's first pit stop. Carl Watmore will therefore take the effective lead of the car race. Glenn Possibly is now four seconds in arrears in all of that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he redeems that. Same with uh, Chris Whitaker, of course, still fighting his way back through from 11th. A lot of cars in pit lane at the moment. And I think uh, I might have just caught a glimpse of uh, Chris Whitaker being one of those cars to come in. Actually, no, he hasn't. No, no. I was looking at Brendan Whitaker. My apologies. So Brendan Whitaker's come in. Chris Whitaker has continued on. So lots to be excited about here at the moment. Really good car race unfolding. Lap 8 of 25. Reminder that we are going all the way through to 25 laps tonight, irrespective of what happens. And we'll have a great post-race show on the back end of that as we recap the Stock Car Series of 2020 and look ahead to what might be next in the Gentleman Sim Racing Club Friday Night Motorsport doubleheader. So looking forward to all of that. Having a look down here on the inside. That's the 99. That's mm -hmm. Nick going up on the inside of Brendan Whitaker. A nice move at that as well. So that'll move Nick up. He was uh, 14th, that should be 13th, but it will fluctuate and vary depending upon where everyone else is up to on pit stop sequence as well. 23 minutes past five track time, now Panorama. 29 minutes past eight. Where are you tuning in around Australia? That's Eastern Standard Time, of course. Friday Night Motorsport, the double header of New Adrift Esports. That just threw me then. There was, a, there was a shot of power lines on the circuit. I thought it was rain. And I knew that we weren't getting rain. It just completely threw me. So across the uh, top of the mountain, the ocular picture tells the story. A great thanks, as always, to Ocular for coming on board to uh, sponsor the aerial shots that we bring you during the broadcast. Robert Hazelgrind's done a great job of uh, incorporating that. That's the fair, it hits on rod straight one more time. There's Nick under pressure. 
He's just lost a couple of spots there across the top of the mountain. Down Conrod into the chase one more time. So Sam Collins, that is, uh, that's just got by Nick. So he's jumped up into position number... I'll wait for the screen to refresh, actually. I can't really comment on that just yet. As they come down into Murray's one more time. The 97 of... Uh, just having a look here. Nick's just come across the line in position number 13. So Sam Collins is ahead of him and Brendan Whitaker ahead of him. Just having a look at uh, Brendan Jackson on your screen there now, the 97, just ahead of Reese Goldfinch in the 31. They're coming out of the cutting this time around. This is the battle for fifth in the car race. And Jackson's got it up under control at this point in time. Ackland, possibly four third, try a second, come what more first. Pit stop sequence underway. Caution's really going to help burn possibly and also. Chris Whitaker. But I, I, I really will be interested to see how much that cost of mistake in turn one comes back to haunt Chris Whitaker at the end of the night, Paul, because um, everyone's got to stop. Yes, you'll gain some time back under safety car, all those different factors, but the problem remains that you're going to be in traffic off the restart, and that's going to be the, the ultimate factor that makes or breaks the race and how much time that you, that you lose trying to navigate your way through all of that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, yeah, Brendan will obviously, if the safety car comes out, he'll pick up some, uh, obviously, uh, space back to the to the leaders. But, yeah, you're right. Just getting through that traffic is going to be critical. Um but, you know, uh, I think uh, Chris has shown uh, through the series that he certainly has the skill to do that. So um, I wouldn't count him out. No, not at all. Into the chase and out of Caltex one more time. So Glenn Possible, wait. That's the big story, obviously, his uh, network issues. Sitting third. Pit stops happening right now. So... Busy pit lane unfolding here. Looks like both uh, Brendan Jackson in the 97 and the car behind him, of course, the 31 of Reese Goldfinch, have come in. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Looks like everyone's jumping into the pits following the leaders by the look of it. A couple of people stayed out. Um, but, uh, White's in there. Yep, absolutely. Carl Watmore's been in and out. He's gone. Michael Trayer follows him. They've got a huge buffer on Glenn Possible Wait right now. About five seconds. Possible Wait just coming out of. The pit lane you saw it at the top of your screen there. This safety car is going to be a real critical game changer in this race, potentially. But what more continues to lead on the mountain? Shreya, Postlewaite, Jackson, Goldfinch, Hobson. Postlewaite might still win the championship, but this is the race that every driver wants to win because of the fact that it's the best. Uh, it, it's happened. High racing or real thing. This is the one where everyone wants to win. Now, it's interesting because I've made some small observations as we've been watching with the crowd. It's big. It's not as big as it will be in October, obviously, for different reasons. But the, the interesting thing for mine, when you look at um, the top of the mountain, there's jumpers and there's jeans and everything else. The people at the bottom of the mountain, there were people wearing shorts and singlets. I don't quite understand that. It's 18 degrees there. It's ne never warm enough for shorts when it's 18 degrees in Bathurst, let me tell you. Um, but it's not as though the temperature changes by four or five degrees between the top and the bottom of the mountain. Anyway, that's just small observations of a commentator that's up, got too much time on his hands at the moment. Round on the Conrad straight one more time. Cal Watmore, Michael Schragel, and Parson Blake, Brendan Jackson, Reese Goldfinch, and Brenton Hobson, the top six here. We do a drift in sports Friday night motorsport. Second leg of the double header, of course. This is, of course, the uh, stock cars from the Mount Panorama circuit. We just had production cars here earlier. Michael Hammond getting the job done there. Caution flag goes now. So there's the there's the lucky draw number that we've breached. The random draw for the caution of the race. The safety car has been deployed. This will be interesting because. Quite a few of our drivers have had this stop already. There will be a few that will obviously stop under caution. And then it, who knows what's going to unfold from here. But this caution flag has been waved. 
at the 22 and 39 mark of this race. So Brenton Hodgson, Cal Watmore, and this has actually worked out really, really well because the caution's been thrown pretty much bang on as the leaders were coming back onto the start-finish strike, and therefore our race leader should be the car that's behind the safety car there, Brenton Hobson. So how good's that? That worked out well for everybody. Pit lane closed. If you're Chris Whitaker, if you're going past a fight, what are you thinking at this point in time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, be interested to see how it pans out with the uh, safety car. So, um, yeah, um, let's see what happens after the restart. That's going to be critical, I think, um, to the end of the race for sure. Indeed it is. I just got a message, and I won't reveal names or anything like that, saying I'm not as hot as normal. We're, we're building the crescendo. Don't worry about that. Uh, we'll, we'll get hot when this restart gets underway. No, you worry. Hey, uh, plenty of time. We've got 35 minutes left. Zach. Exactly. So plenty of time exactly. to get excited. 100%. Hey, um, I'll, I'll reply to that message privately a little bit later on anyway. Um, interesting to note the, the, the gameplay that's uh, at stake here because there's, there's risk and reward in stopping now and trying to get home, but there could also be the mentality of, hang on, we're not, it's not early enough. And that's the that's the damned if you do, damned if you don't nature of having a lucky dip safety car. I say lucky dip, but it's a random draw. It's pick a, pick a number at random, and and that's the number that the caution flag is going to be thrown. It's not as though it's triggered by accidents or anything like that. It is thrown by the admin within the gentleman sim racing club that look after this race. But that's the damned if you do, damned if you don't nature of this, Paul, in the, in the sense that. If, if it came out a few laps later, everyone would probably come in and just put on fresh tyres, have that splash and that. Because it's here and we're still, what are we, lap 11, we're still 14 laps to go after this one. It could, it might just be a little bit too early to fuel up and get home. And there might also be that mentality around, do I need fresher tyres to get me home as well? Yeah, absolutely. And some of the lead runners might do a splash because... Um, you know, if you, if you, I reckon they've, if they do a quick splash now, they'll have enough to get home no matter what. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see whether anyone just jumps in the pit, does a quick splash, and, and jumps back out. Yeah. So, Brendan Hobson, Cal Watmore, Michael Schreyer, and Daniel Ackland, then John O'Hill, one, two, three, four, five. So, let's have a look at this. I'm just having a look at um, <laughs> the comments coming in. Uh, Scott Nolan just giving it the Glen Pulse of weight because he runs on rubbish internet. And, uh, and that's about it so far. But if you are watching, and we have got 30 of you tuning in via Do a Drift Esports, we do hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Um, if you are tuning in, send us in your feedback, uh, feedback and your comments and let us know what you want to see, who you think might win over the course of the next uh, 14 laps here. Um, next time round, we should probably get one to go. Interesting to see. Uh, yes, there are going to be some pit stops here. There are some drivers coming in to run the gauntlet. This will be a few fresh tyres. Hope we can get home. Daniel Ackland is one. Looks like Nick's going in as well. Yes, the 99 is in. I didn't catch the other car that followed uh, Daniel Ackland in. But we have got three cars in the lane running the gauntlet right now. It'll be interesting too tonight having Nick in the post-race discussion rather than being the co-commentator. Just asking what strategy he was playing and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, for those that were wondering, Chris Whitaker sitting ninth at the moment. Glenn Possible sitting sixth at the moment. A couple of cars getting the wave around, um, including Kester Ward and Gavin. Uh... So Todd Parks is in the pits. Uh, Nico's taking tyres. By the look, he's taking at least two, two tyres at least. So, sorry, Gore, uh, Gore and Barbic was the other one that got the wave around the safety car as well. So just the two cars getting waved around there, Paul. So I mean, it's a long track. A lot of these guys do well to uh, go a lap. You've, you've got to be doing something wrong to go a lap down in the, well, 10 or 11 laps that we've had thus far. So only two cars a lap down. That's a good sign. Chris Polling's out of the race. Brady McHugh's out of the race. That's not really a surprise there. Brady got crunched up early on. Paul Jansen out as well. 
Kester's two laps down, so I don't know exactly what happened to Kester Ward, but uh, can't be good <laughs> if he's two laps down. It's been a frustrating yeah. night probably at the office for him. I'd say so. He's probably uh, hit the wall at some stage and had some damage, and um, yeah, he's two laps down at the moment. <laughs> so uh, I think the, the ruling is that we'll only get... To, actually, Kester's got a wave around, so he'll be one lap down by the end of this safety cap. That's period. right. That's right. right. Now, the, the other important thing too, Paul, with the rules of this competition, no caution in the last 10. Correct. That, uh, that doesn't bode well for anyone that is a lap down, a la Kester, when we get back to the resumption, because it's highly unlikely, unless we see a catastrophic pile-up that blocks the circuit or something stupid like that, that we're going to see another caution between now and when we hit lap 16, which is that 10 to go, Mark. Um, Correct, that's right because we're on lap 12, so that gives us 13, 14, and 15. Still a possibility, but no caution will be thrown in that last 10. So, sure, if, if, if we have an incident on lap 14 and the caution gets thrown and we go into that last 10, that's fine. But once we get to lap 16, once we start that, there won't be a caution thrown for anyone playing along at home and wondering what, uh, what the hell we're talking about here. Caution flag still in the air, just waiting to see when the lights will go out on the safety car, whether we're going to get one more lap here. Any, any idea at your end, Paul? Have you seen lights out on the safety car or not? Uh, I'll just jump forward. Hang on a minute. Lights are still on at the moment, but... Um, okay, they so that would off, mean... Uh, it could be one more lap. We'll just have a look. That's what I'm thinking as well. So that'll give us a restart on lap 14, if that's the case. And, and what's going to be interesting for mine, because there are so many cars running the gauntlet here, it's going to be interesting to see who has called the right strategy, who has made the right call, I should say, who has made the right route and move. Uh, Brenton Hobson, 26 and 43, the race time last time by the line. So, look, time certainly shouldn't be an issue. And if it is, we'll just extend the time because I, I, I do not like a time certain finish when we've got a lap count there to get to. Uh, 25 laps. And, and all these drivers will appreciate running full distance as well. I guarantee you that. Um, so Hobson, Carl Watmore, Michael Schreyer, Daniel Ackland, and John O'Hill the top five. We're going around one more time under the caution. Aerial shots courtesy of Ocular, of course. You just saw it on your screen there a few moments ago. Lights ablaze on the safety car. Caution flag, Mount Panorama. And all hell's about to break loose, as Neil Crompton would say. All these people have bought a ticket to the last, you know, in this case, 12 laps. And we cannot wait to get back underway. Gentlemen, Sim Racing Club, courtesy of um, a broadcast, courtesy of Dual Drift Esports, sponsorship from LJ Hooker Game Dark Car under the pits at the bottom of your screen there. Um, Central Coast Subaru, of course, we also need to thank the All Certs team for their uh, sponsorship and their um, support of the production car series that we brought you earlier in the evening. And as the flag is wa raved, uh, raised, I should say, by the... Um, dear, dear, oh dear, I'm having a struggle of a night. Um, it's held up aloft, not being waved, just held static by the flag marshal on the, uh, the start-finish line there. So that means that we will have one lap to go. One lap to green here. And we will get back underway on what will be lap 14 of 25. So that'll be 12 laps between us and the chequered flag and crowning our stock car champion for 2020. The gentlemen, Sim Racing Club, quickly need to go back and also, again, as you see the aerial shots there, thank the team from Ocular for their support. And a reminder, while we've got this chart, that Monday night we're back with you. We go to a longer circuit. There aren't too many of them on the uh, iRacing server, but we go to the spa Fragerchamps circuit in Belgium. It's been a long circuit kind of week. We had Ride America on Monday night. We got this tonight. We go to spa Fragerchamps on Monday night for the Melporter Designs GT Series. Of course, an another sponsor that we need to thank as well for their ongoing support of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club. In the latest round of that championship. It'll be round six, of course. And the, the, the interesting thing there is only this week have we seen a multiple winner crown. Brady McHugh grabbing back-to-back -back wins. First back-to-back -back winner of the season. First multiple winner of the season in the GT series. Can he track down Jeff Connell, who's the current championship leader? Join us on Monday night to find out around half past eight. For all of that, looking forward to it immensely. Magnificent scenic shots of one of my very favourite parts of the world. Those of you that know me well know how much I uh, hold a soft spot for Bathurst. There's actually 
despite the fact that I love my work up here with Queensland Raceway and I value the income that it uh, provides, um, it was a very hard decision to uh, pack up and, and leave the central tablelands. The winter wardrobe that remains here, unused essentially, or, or 95% of it unused anyway, staggering, courtesy of needing the thick, big ski jackets just to get through a cold winter day there. As I say, a cold winter day here in Ipswich or a cold winter night has nothing on that, no doubt. Hey, uh, Gentlemen Sim Racing Club, remind you to join us uh, right after the race. We're going to stay with you on air here for about an hour and have a chat to all the different drivers that come into the chat room and have a chat to us and reflect on what has been an incredible series, not just the race tonight, which has been pretty impressive thus far, but the series as well. Now, we've got some... Just got one of the slower cars here coming down. Okay. I, I was just a bit confused there because uh, we had one of the cars coming down the, in, <coughs> some the inside. Some issues at the moment, so we're just trying to sort them out. So, okay. Um, Thank you, Paul. I was wondering what the hell was going on there because I thought all the cars had already been waved around. Yeah, there's a problem with it. Um, there was a lucky dog in the server for some reason, so uh, Mike was trying to work ah, it out at the moment. So, Gotcha. Right, take a breath, folks. Hold on. 12 laps. It's going to take us around 26, 27 minutes to get that done. It's Brenton Hobson leading the race here from Cal Watmore, Michael Schreyer. Watch Glenn Poss have led in fourth spot. The champion elect. Brendan Whitaker, Sam Collins, Chris Whitaker, Reese Goldfinch, Brendan Jackson, and Nick Wins are the top 10 at the moment. Pace car pulls off. Race truck in this case, race back on. Halfway mark. Johnston Racing Club, Mount Panorama, Florida, Motors will do it with eSports. Hobson leads the field to green. Nicely done. Look at the attack straight away from Carmel. Off the inside. Shots fired already at turn one. One more leads the field. Boom. Lead change there. Third one of the right. Up down straight we go. So Hobson relegated in second. Already under Pressure from Possum White and Schreyer as they head up over the rise down to turn two. Possum White's found a way by Michael Schreyer off the restart as well. And he's down in pursuit of Cal Walkmore. If you're just joining us, you're not aware of what's going on with Glenn Possum, but he was leading the race, then he just dropped off the screen. He had some Wi Fi and some network issues that he's then that have seen him. Uh, drop back through the field, but he's got that sorted now. And he's right to uh, race to the end here and race his arch rival of the last couple of weeks in Callum Watmore. But he's got to get by uh, Brenton Hobson first. Aerial shots, Curtis Divocular, Sean tell the story across Green Park and on down the McPhillian skyline it is with Cal Watmore leading the way. Great restart, clean restart. A little bit surprised that we didn't have a bit more drama. Of course, if you're just joining us as well, you missed the start of the race where we had Brandon, uh, sorry, Chris Whitaker, who's sitting seventh at the moment, slip out of fourth position right to the back of the field. And Watmore was a little bit wide through the elbow, but he gathered it up before kissing the wall and he hits Conrad straight. First time under real racing conditions the on the red star here. Weeping from right to left, try, trying to break the slipstream in the draft. Of uh, Brenton Hobson as they hit the chase. A little bit tailly through there, Watmore, but he got it stopped through the chase. On the run down to Moit. So this is lap 14, so they're going to come back across the line, 11 to go. A reminder, if we get back to the line at the end of 15 without the caution flag being flown, it'll be green to the end here at Mount Panorama. What more? Hobson, Possum White, Shreyers drop back to fourth in all that. Big Loser off the restart. The 24 of Adam Lavis has gone around at Murray's corner as well. That's off screen at the moment, but he's facing the wall. The pit wall. There he is now on your screen. He's had a spin there coming out of turn 23. And uh, Nick's also had a spin at turn one as well. But he's been able to resume a lot quicker than what Adam Lavis was able to do. Now there's Sam Collins on your screen, folks, out of Griffin's Bend. 
The 64, regular in QR Sports sedans here, right away, and he was sideways going into the cutting, and he's washed all his speed away. And he's back to pack up as well. Brendan Jackson's got through the 97, and everyone else banked up in all of that. Big one for Collins. But to his credit, he kept it off the wall, and he did a nice job of it as well. Through, up, over the rise. Past the fence. At McPhilly Park. A waggle from Jackson across Skyline. Right. Left. Down through the S's and into the Devon we go. That sequence of right, left, right, left, right, left, right, elbow. That's where we're at right now. Magnificent season this has been. But it's not over yet. Is there a sting in the tail? In our sights here as Sam Collins continues in position number six. He's under pressure from uh, Brendan Jackson and also Chris Whitaker closing in. And important to note that uh, Nick Windsor and John O'Hill aren't too far behind that. So Collins out of the chase. The 97 of Jackson was wide. Oh, two wide going into Murray's. That was almost three wide. It could have been very nasty. Now, there's Whitaker. Chris Whitaker on the outside at Murray's corner. What about that? Not every day you see that dog off successfully. Brendan Jackson up on the inside going into Hell Corner. And he gets the job done, does he? No. Whitaker holds on the outside and gets the spot. That's position seven of Chris Whitaker. Nicely done. Out in pursuit of the leaders, but he's lost too much time. These guys are 12 seconds down the road from Carl Watmore, who has 0.6 of a second on Brendan uh, Hobson. Glenn Possilwate's closing right up as well. Schreyer there in fourth. Whitaker and Smith, then Collins, Whitaker, Jackson, Goldfinch and Windsor. All those cars you're watching here at the moment. Our focus is Whitaker. Track cam. Wall cam at the cutting. Shows you the steep elevation. Steepest point on the circuit. One in sixth grade. The rise up out of there. I tell you what, it's an absolute mongrel of a track to walk as well. I'm not, I, I am no physical peak fitness specimen, but uh, on a very warm day, this thing will absolutely knock the life out of you. I know people that used to run the thing, you know, I, I just look at them and shake their head. Yep, good on you. Waste your energy, go your hardest. But when you see, when you see, and I racing on the track cams does it a great degree of justice, just like the real live pictures that you see there every February and October, and this year November as well. But when you see just how steep the rise and fall is, you gradually earn more of an appreciation for what these guys can do, both in the simulator and in the real world, with a tremendous amount of speed and accuracy, and that's what's required. That was a brilliant shot. You may have just seen it on the right-hand side of your screen there. We're on board, I believe, with uh, Cal Watmore, our race leader here. Yes, we are. We were seeing on the right-hand side there, how good was that? The, the, the flames and the fire coming out of the car, under brakes going into the chase. Real good insight into just how realistic these things are. We'll get Cal to comment on that for you a little bit later. He loves his stock car racing. He sits there at the moment as the race leader. Now, he's got 0.5 of a second on Glenn Post of late Michael Schreyer's in just behind them. Now, I'm not sure. I only just saw two cars on the shot there. So whether Post of having another connection issue, we will wait and see. But if that's the case, possibly has got back by Australia. We did see that move, but he's got up into second. And now the two men that duked it out last week so well at Phillip Island can duke it out here for the biggest prize in stock car racing in the uh, Gentleman's Sin Racing Club calendar. The win in the Bathurst 155. As I'm just going to double it on the spot here. 25 laps, 155 kilometers. You figure it out, folks. That pots of weight still in the box seat to win the championship at this point in time. How good's the tracks of the, uh, the wall cam at the cutting there? 
as I said earlier, just make sure you appreciate the, the, the steep climb up into that point of the circuit. So much more. Every year we find a new way to do it justice across the top of the mountain. Now, there's Glenn Possifite back on our screen. Now, I'm just trying to work out where he is in relation to our race leader or whether he's had another network issue. And he's, I'm thinking he's had, he's had another issue. network issue. He's about halfway yeah. in the pack. So That's yeah. what I was thinking, Rob, because he's still showing a second on my leaderboard, but everyone else is on Conrad straight on down into the chase and he's coming into the elbow. So this is big. This is really big because you need to keep an eye on Chris Whitaker, and I need Paul and uh, Nick to explain the, the point system structure to me in a moment. But this is big for Glenn Possible because if something else is to happen and he's then network wise and he drops off, Chris Whitaker will win this championship Stephen Bradbury style, just pipping him at the post. I don't expect that to happen, but it's going to be mighty tight right here. So Glenn, Glenn actually pitted. Oh, he pitted. Oh, he must, he's going a two stopper, so I think that okay. uh, everyone's going to have to pit again by the look of it. Glenn's pitted. Well, that's right. Glenn's set the standard. If he's pitting, then that's the problem. Ah, yes, here they all come now. Yeah, so no, no, Glenn, Glenn Possible's trying to do the undercut. Yep. Now, this is interesting. I didn't actually see him pull off into the pit lane last time around. Come out in the lead, by the way. But what about that? He's been the catalyst for all of this that you're seeing on the screen here. A flurry of pit activity. And you know what? He has. Glenn Possible has pulled off the undercut, ladies and gentlemen. He leads by three car lengths going into Griffin Bend. You can't see him at the moment, but he is three car lengths ahead of Callum Watmore. Or is that just the master stroke, the genius stroke of the century, or what? We are lap 18 of 25. So this one and seven more to go. And Possifway is the leader. On your screen now, you're right on board with him to the top of the mountain, and Carl Watmore is second. Now, if you're going Possifway, you're really hoping you don't have a network issue from here on in. That's what we thought it was originally, because we didn't see him on our screen. Not realising that he opted get out of the uh, the traffic, get some clear air and take the pit stop before everyone else. Signaling the intent that if Glenn Possible can't do it on, two st on one stop, we can't do it on one stop and everyone's followed suit. Everyone's followed the leader, albeit 6.213 kilometres later. So uh, Possible for half a second at the moment. Over one more sideways and Taylor going into the elbow. But he gathered it up nicely. They are on the limit, these two. They are absolutely giving it everything, and what more especially. Awesome way to have to drive tactically here down the straight, try and break the uh, the draft and the toe and the foot stream. But how uh, what more can pick up by following him down to, uh, to the chase here, the fastest point in Australian motorsport. They flip it right, they're hard on the brakes. That's where they lose a lot of track time because they are such hard cars to pull up under brakes. What more a great run out of the chase. The 69 of Trent Lovis has found the wall at the elbow. He's not had a great night. He was sitting down in ninth. He's going to lose a couple of spots out of all of that. Back to the main straight. Seven laps to go. And one more having a look up on the inside. Oh, have a look at this. Come on, more goes to the lead of the panorama. The champion elect and the man that's uh, dominated the last two weeks in Carl Watmore side by side up the uh, mountain right here and Austin Blake takes the lead back. He got a better run out of Hellcourt and despite being on the outside, it was Carl Watmore, excuse me, I'm just uh, having some reflex here. It was Carl Watmore who got the, uh, got the tail out. Despite getting out the inside and getting the job done, he didn't get a good enough run. He bogged it down coming out of hell corner, and that's what cost him the run up Mountain Straight. But he's right there, and Possum White will know it. Last week, we saw them duke it out for a while, and Possum White hardly had a chance to put a move on Watmore. Watmore has tonight, just by making that move down hell corner, signaled his intent to race hard right to the very end, and these two will jerk it out every step of the way. Don't switch off for the next 12 minutes, folks. This is going to be must-watch motorsport as they head over the sky one, one more time. Six and a half to go. And uh, Paul, just on that note, I'm going to just settle down for a moment and take a breath here. 
any uh, news from race control, any uh, official penalties or warnings that you've uh, had to take note of or incident? Actually, I can't talk to Nico just yet. He's just gone mute on me, so I'll, uh, I'll come back to Nico in a moment. We ride on board at the top of the mountain. Just appreciate how good the iRacing is in terms of how it's laid to scan the circuit to within millimetres of perfection. We're on board with Sam Collins just now as they make their way in to the elbow one more time. And he's following... Um, I'm just trying to pick up who that is in front of him at the moment there, folks. The 64 of uh, Sam Collins. That'll be Reese Dogfinch in the 11. Sorry, in the 31. In the 11, just in front of him. So uh, that's the battle for 10th and 11th happening there on your screen right now. As Collins brings us out of the chase one more time. Trackside camera is being set up tonight, of course, by Adam Lavis. And he did a beautiful job of it as well. Now, if we can go back to our uh, leaders in just a moment, we'll actually stick with this for the moment because we've got to move potentially the 41 and the, uh, the 195. 185, I should say. I'll get it right eventually. That's, of course, uh, Scott Griffiths in the 41, and the 185 is Nick Windsor. Now, Windsor's actually um, gained time on Griffiths in all of that. Have a look at this, folks. Back to the leaders we go. How? Oh, jeez. They were lucky to pull it up there. Cal Wobble was on the outside. You can't do that at this time of the day at Mount Panorama. Trying to get by Ben Blossom. I saw them side by side running up Mountain Strike. I didn't think he'd be game enough to have a crack on the outside going into a cutting. It, 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 it nearly, nearly paid the price for it as well. Getting it gathered up, getting it stopped at the cutting on the marbles. And he almost kissed the wall. But he did lose a little bit of time in all that. Not enough for Possum Wake to get comfortable. He's right there. And Possum Wake knows that he's a threat for the next, uh, what is it, five and a half laps here on the mountain. 6.213 kilometres a lap. So when they get back to the line, they're going to have just over 31 kilometres to go in what has been a fascinating car race every step of the way. Glenn Possibwaite leads this by 0.2 of a second. Again, trying to break the draft of Carl Watmore. Make it extra difficult for him to get by going into the chase. Extraordinary shots here. There's curb cam at the chase. They ride the curb. Out of there again. Down under the bridge. Five to go this time. A very different look at Murray's Corner for you, courtesy of our track cameras. We have more of that, I suppose, than you can ever imagine. Across the line, five to go this time. When does Watmore make a move? Does he look next for a minute or two and just get back into a rhythm, get back into focus, and not think too much about getting by just now and save it for maybe two, three laps from home? He's got another five laps. Is, it, is there a chance that you... He could be going for this too early. Do you want to be leading at the start of the last lap? Do you want to be leading on the second last lap? All these questions are soon to be answered. How difficult is Glenn Possibly going to make it as the race goes on? Back to this battle between Sam Collins, though. In the 64, Reese Goldfinch and him side by side on the way up Mountain Straight. Collins looking up on the inside, going into Griffin's Bend. And if he can get the job done on their brakes, he'll be going up into eighth spot. And he does just that. Oh, Finch wanted to hang with him on the outside, but he can't do that through Griffins. And Sam Collins gets up into eight. May have been juking it out for the last couple of laps here. And cleanly, Brendan Jackson's in behind them. He is 10th. Our mate Nick is 11th at the moment. Concentration central at the moment for him because we haven't uh, seen him jump into the commentary box to have a chat just yet. But once the race is done, Stand by, we'll have so many drivers coming and have a chat to us here on uh, Friday Night Motorsport for Do Drift Esports. A Sunday afternoon at Mount Panorama, it doesn't get much better than this. We are approaching six o'clock track time here. Oh, Sunday, November 15, so we're looking into the future at this point in time as we return to the battle on Conrod Strait. I'll tell you what, the big event this on this particular weekend that we're looking at here, November 15, 
a little bit about the six hour. If they can get a finish like this, shaped to 2017, of course, Luke Saul and Charles Monster. If they can get a finish like this, they won't be disappointed on the seven network around Australia. Out of the out of the chase one more time. We're going to come back to the line. Let's stick with this battle here because Cal Watmore is putting the pressure on Glenn Possible. Four laps to go. A smidge on under 25k left. The Bathurst 155 showdown for the stock cars on a Friday night, and look at this. Possum White leads them to hell corner. The slightest slip up from either of these drivers, you can forget about it. The slightest slip up from Possum White, and Watmore will take the lead. The slightest slip up from Watmore, the harder the task will be at trying to find a way by Glenn Possum White. It's an arduous task, it's a difficult task already. Possum White's weaving from left to right to try and take the line and hold the spot and he's done it nicely so far to two. Out of Griffin's bend on the run to the cutting one more time. What a cracking race this is turning out to be. It was already, it had all the right ingredients. It had the right recipe for it to be an absolute cracker and it's delivering. In spades and the most sideways coming out of the cutting. One more's on the outside going up to the top of the mountain now for the crest. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Possum White had the car all over the place going through the car and couldn't get enough grip to save himself, but he still managed to hold this spot because Watmore was trying to find a way around him. It's just not possible at that part of the circuit. It's one line for everybody through there. I don't know how he held on to that. That was a oh, I've got no idea, Paul. Good to have you back in the booth, by the way. Just, um, there was something I wanted to ask you earlier, and if I think of it again, I'll come back to it. But uh, let's focus on this at the moment. This is um, Parcel White and Watmore. Whoa! Big sideway moment going into the elbow. The Glenn Parcel White. Watmore on the smoother run. Gather it up. Fires in the slipstream. Let's focus here because this could be an opportunity for Watmore if he can get a good enough run to have a look on Parcel White going into the chase one more time. This is a super battle. We expected no less after what we saw at the island last Friday night. Into the chase we go. Three laps to go and they cross the line this time. One more closes right back up. You just wonder when he's weighing up the options of when he wants to make a move and, and how late he wants to leave it here. Into Murray's for the third last time. Three laps to go. Now, uh, Paul, I'll quickly come back to you before we uh, see any more drama here. Any penalties, any incidents to, to, uh, to take note of so far from race control standpoint? Not at this stage, no. I think it's been, um, there's been a couple of racing incidents, but um, again, we'll, we'll have a look at after the race. If there's any protests, so that the results that are posted up tonight um, will, be, um, will be provisional, pending uh, any protest forms that are, that are submitted. Uh, at the moment, um, I haven't seen anything that I haven't had to review yet, so uh, at this stage, good. We just saw some drama at Turn 1 with a couple of cars spinning around down there, but everyone's been able to resume. Didn't quite catch who that was. Big sideways moment for uh, Carl Mortmore coming out of Griffins. Now, Possum White holds the line going into the cutting. Does a nice job to get it out of there. A lot cleaner than the last time around, but Watmore is continuing to put the pressure on. A superb car race from first until last year. The stock cars, the last race of the series. And Glenn Possum White, the champion elect, he's done enough tonight because as long as he finishes, he's got Chris Whitaker covered. That's all he needed to worry about. But it's now about bragging rights and winning the battle with Watmore more than anything else. We ride on board with Watmore uh, with the... Uh, I think that might be Michael Schreyer and Brenton Hobson that we're following now. So Brenton Hobson's following Michael Schreyer. So the battle for third's not yet over as well. Brenton Hobson's closed the gap a little bit. It was a second and a half. It's about a second now between Schreyer and Hobson on the run to the elbow. So battle for first is on. Battle for third is on. The battle for first is on Conrad Strait. You are watching Glenn Possum wait and Callum Walkmore. Down the Conrad Strait they go. On the run to the chase in the fastest point in Australia Motorsport. A big breaking point when they get to turn 21 is so important and it's so critical. It sets up the last three corners of the lap. There's 21. Ride the curb. They didn't take too much either of them. On the run down to Murray's. Oh, two laps to go, folks. You asked for a cracker of a finish to the season. Not only are you going to get that, but you're also going to get an epic finish as well and that's something that everyone loves across the line they go two laps to go 
12.426 kilometers of car racing left. And look at Sam Collins here. He's managing to hold on to the battle for eighth with Brendan Jackson as well. There are battles for first, third, and eighth dominating our attention at the moment. It has been phenomenal entertainment from first until last tonight. Also a great battle, fifth, sixth, seventh, by the way. Absolutely. Um, nothing wrong with that battle. Daniel Ackland, Brendan Whitaker, and uh, uh, Chris Whitaker as well. Just uh, 2.6 seconds separating those guys at this point in time. The rest of them are a lot closer than that, but... We'll keep an eye out for Ackland, who's got breathing space on Whitaker and Whitaker at this point in time. In fact, Ackland is as good as home there as long as he doesn't slip up. He's got 1.6 seconds on Brendan Whitaker, which is far more comfortable than what Glenn Possible ate and Callum Watmore are. Although, as we go back over the rise at the top of the mountain, there's the battle of a third. Uh, Hobson and Schreyer, it looks like Hobson's actually found a way by there. Must have got by at Griffin's Bend while watching the battle with Sam Collins and Brendan Jackson at the top of the mountain. Carl Watmore has lost about half a second to uh, to Glenn Possilweight as well. So it looks as though Glenn Possilweight might have done enough to hold on here. But there's still another 6.213 kilometres to go after this lap. So there's still time for that to change as they head into the elbow for the penultimate time. And it's Possilweight leading as they head down Conrod. Oh, what a car race. I mean, yeah, okay, that isn't the nose to tail of the last couple of laps, but there's still time for what more, unless the tyres have gone off. Now it's important to note that because possibly it actually pitted a lap earlier than everybody, and yet he's got the best car out there. He has done all season, and again, it looks as though the, the difference in pit time isn't going to affect him whatsoever. Under the bridge, penultimate time, last lap put in the air this time. For Glenn Possible, and this will be something like his uh, sixth win in eight weeks or something ridiculous like that. It's just been a dominant run to the championship for him. And he's got now just 23 corners to go to get the job done here in this 25 lap cracker of a motor race from Mount Panorama. 59 and 55 was the race time when they got back to the line. So the clock has now expired. So we almost went time certain there and no one would have been happy about that. So we just snuck it in by 4.1 seconds. Would you believe that? Unbelievable. No time certain factor here. It's all guns blazing and out right to the very end. Also, White leads out of Griffins for the last time on the run to the cutting. There is the battle of a third. The 31 of Reese Goldfinch has just gone off the circuit at one. So he uh, will try and maintain 10th in all of that, but I think he might have lost out to Nick. Our, uh, our mate in the 99, he might have gone through there to take 11th spot. Have a look at Daniel Ackland sitting there in fifth spot at this point in time. Hobson and Trey are still fighting over third, but Hobson has broken clear. Top of the mountains worth having a look at right at this point in time as well because the race leader is under serious pressure from Callum Watmore as they head into the dipper and the S's the last time. The S's, then the dipper. Then the run down to the elbow and Callum Watmore is giving, giving Glenn Possible the big hurry up. He had 0.8 of a second coming into this last lap. It's about 0.5 of a second as they hit the elbow for the last time. He got it stopped. He got it out of there cleanly. Now he's just going to get through the last four corners cleanly. Uh, one of which is the fastest corner in Australian motorsport. And then you've got to get it stopped at the chase off the back of that fastest corner. Down the Conrod straight for the last time. Into the chase we go. Possum Wake needs to get it pulled up here and nicely so. And has done. And I don't think there's anything what more can do from here. On the run under the bridge for the last time. Not only is Glenn Possible going to claim the prize at Fathers tonight, he's going to claim the Stock Car Championship for the Gentleman Sim Racing Club in 2020. Light it up indeed. Under the main straight and Possible gets the job done. And consistency was key to the championship there. Six wins out of the last eight races. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. Third place will go to Brendan Hobson and Michael Schreyer in for fourth. Daniel Ackland across the line in fifth spot. Then Brendan Whitaker, Chris Whitaker, and Sam Collins. Brendan Jackson and Reese Gar. Actually, I can't say Reese Goldfinch just yet with any great confidence because of that off track excursion on the last lap there at Hell Corner. And that's exactly right. Nick's going to come through and claim 10th there behind Brendan Jackson. 
And now there's a log jam of cars lined on Mountain Straight. Glenn Possum will to light it up and smoke it up and celebrate in style as well he should, Paul Nichols. That was a superb drive, not just tonight, but across the course of 10 weeks as well. Just enjoy these celebrations for a minute, folks. I'm going to catch my breath. Yeah, what an amazing race. Awesome. Um, Glenn Pottersweight, absolutely incredible. Uh, under pressure for quite a lot of the race there by Cal. Uh, Bretton hops an awesome race. I think it's one of the first, uh, maybe the second race he's, he's done with us this year or this season. So Michael Schreyer as well, like an awesome effort from Michael. Uh, Daniel Ackman, Brendan Whitaker, Chris Whitaker, uh, Sam Collins, uh, Brendan Jackson, and Nico Pop, top 10. So awesome, awesome effort there. Down to, uh, to Reese, uh, Nick Windsor, Trent Lays, uh, John O'Hill, Warwick Sharp, uh, Goran Bebic uh, were the, uh, the the drivers on the uh, on the lead lap. So great job! Indeed, it was. And uh, as I said, it was all about one, once we saw Possible Weight come out of the elbow. They had both he and Watmore had moments there on that last lap, on in the, in that last few laps, I should say. And we both realised that um, as long as Possible Weight was leading coming out of the elbow, all he had to do was get it stopped at the critical point, which was coming out of the, into the chase and out of there. If he got out of there cleanly, there was nothing Carl Watmore was going to be able to do. Those two were just so evenly matched throughout the course of the night. But despite the odd um, overtaking opportunity for Watmore here and there, it was just Possible Weight had oh, clearly the better car in the long run because uh, Watmore had one opportunity that he almost converted, got it sideways coming out of um, Hell Corner, and then Possible went through and uh, didn't look back from that point on, despite tremendous pressure right the way through. So last week it was Cal Watmore by less than a second. This week it's gone Possible by 0.4 of a second. And they were five seconds clear of Brenton Hodgson, Michael Schreyer, Daniel Ackland, Brendan Whitaker, Chris Whitaker. He won't be happy. Samuel Collins, Brendan Jackson, and, uh, of course, our good mate Nick, who rounded out the top 10. Got by Reese Goldfinch on the last lap. And uh, if uh, Rob's having a look at uh, the chase, he might see a few cars doing stupid things through their Jigs of Hazard style over the chase uh, rise once more, just driving straight through the gravel trap and trying to clear the tyre wall. Here they come now. Watch this, folks. The, these blokes are lunatics. It's, it's a good thing this is the virtual world and they don't have a damage bill to pay for. Um, the 30 is being a little bit more responsible about it, but there are other cars that will drive straight through that gravel trap and launch it over the tire wall. You may see a couple before the end no, of this they've, race. They've all, been, they've all jumped into pits, I think. Uh, <laughs> they've all did. Oh, what a shame. The production car boys had more fun with the post race than they did. Uh, Nick, before we start talking to all the rest of them, tell us about your night, mate. Tenth spot in all of that. Um, 49 seconds. Sorry, no, not 49. 32 seconds off the win. I was looking at Nick, Nick Windsor, not you. Um, 32 off the win, but you got by into the top 10 on the last lap. Was that a pass result for you? Oh, yeah. Finishing top 10 is always a pass result. Excellent. A um, little bit of drama at the start because there were a few of you that tried to qualify but just didn't register a lap time. That meant a lot of you starting from the back of the field and working your way through. What was the traffic like? Uh, it's like the parting of the Red Seas. It's just... Um... <laughs> Up and I was just like, all right, cool. Yeah. I was quite happy with that. One hour, two minutes and 10 seconds, the uh, the race winning time there. We almost went time certain. I cannot believe that. Um, but uh, Glenn Potter right, snuck in that last lap with five seconds to go. How lucky can you be? We're just having a look at highlights from your race on screen here, Nick. Um, so what, happened in front of you? what happened in front of you to Reese Goldfinch on the last lap there? Uh, him and Sam were having a dice into the chase. Uh, yep. I, um, I caught him into one and he locked the rears and around she went. Okay. So he did it all on his own. Quite unfortunate there. Yeah. yeah speaking of uh, incidents that some of these drivers have uh, done on their own, there's a bit of them to talk about tonight. Don't worry about that. Um, let's, uh, let's bring in... Let's bring in our mate, Glenn Possible, and say not only well done on an epic drive tonight, mate, but well done on the Stock Car Championship as well. More wins than anyone else. Just consistency the key to your performance throughout the course of the season. And to bring it home with a win, 
not necessary given the uh, the performance we saw from um, Chris Whitaker tonight finishing down the order. He was your main threat coming into this round. But nice icing on the cake all the same, mate. Well done. Uh, thanks heaps for that. Uh, pretty stoked to finally wrap that up. It was a uh, pretty fun <laughs> round there. That was um that was an epic race between you and uh, Callum Watmore in the closing stages. He only just had his measure of 0.4 of a second in the end. Uh, it wouldn't have felt very comfortable, uh, even though 0.4 of a second suggests that you had a little buffer, but you knew that he was there if you made the slightest uh, mistake along the way, yeah? Yeah, I was pretty comfortable at the start there, and then my internet started dropping out. So, <laughs> yeah, that uh, made it difficult. I slid straight off the last corner when it dropped because I lost the... Uh, all the grip in the tyres, which seems to happen, drops, went straight in the fence and then <laughs> struggled around for a few laps till the safety car came back. Yeah, I was pretty lucky with that and then just tried to make my way back through. Just, yeah, Cal just absolutely just hammered me all the way to the end there. That was as hard as I could go the whole time. Just uh, talk to us about those internet dropouts because from what we've read, because there's been a few people sticking it to you on socials, only mates of yours, I assume. What is it with uh, the internet connection and and, and uh, is there anything that can be done at your end to prevent these issues happening as the uh, the series progresses or the next series, I should say now? Uh, I'm sort of a country Victoria and I'm just using uh, like a Wi-Fi dongle at the moment, but ah, yep. I'm moving the house next week, so I think I need to get NBN connected. Absolutely, uh, 100%. And uh, I, I say that as someone with the MBN here, it's it's not all it's cracked up to be all the time, mate, but uh, when it works, it's good. So uh, no, you'll enjoy that. Um, come back to you in just a second to talk about the race with uh, Carl Watmore uh, because uh, once again, you two took centre stage and were the focus of our attention there with the battle between uh, you pair for the lead, just as it was last week at Phillip Island. I'll bring Carl Watmore into the discussion, mate. Unbelievable effort. Just fell, uh, just falling short. You put the pressure on uh, Glenn every step of the way there. Even made a move for the lead. The slightest slip up uh, uh, and, and loss of speed coming out of the hell corner prevented you from converting that uh, overtaking opportunity. But an epic race all the same, mate. So you happy with second or would you have liked another lap? Uh, well, uh, yeah, would have liked to win, but hey, uh, congrats, Gleno. But uh, the internet dropout really brought that race to life. Gleno would have been. <clears> it did, didn't it? That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, when I was leading, a great fight with Brenton as well. Um, Where did he come from with such awesome speed out of the box? That was a great debut for him. And uh, yeah, I, I was talking away with my uh, engineer, Ross. Um, in the lead, happily cruising along, and just my brain switched off and went into out lap mode um, out of the cutting, and I fucked first gear instead of driving away in second like I should have. And I just um, <laughs> lost my rhythm and got out of the groove. Like, no fault of Ross, I'm, I've been talking heaps. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I feel for Chris o on the on the start. Yeah, what a, what a bummer with such a good qualifying effort. I know he's working. That was an awesome quality effort. I couldn't put a lap together. Um, yep. Yeah, feel for Chris o. Cheers. For sure. Hey, uh, Glenn, I just want to come back to you because we didn't see the uh, the car drop off the screen. Um, when this happens um, and you lose time, what exactly is the contributor to the time loss? When, when you look at the internet connectivity issue, is it because you're able to reconnect and it's just a minor slip or... Are there other factors there? Because when, when we first saw you go up the screen, we thought, oh, yeah, the internet's dropped out, you're gone. But you were able to redeem it pretty quickly. What happens there? Um, I'm really not sure what's causing it. I've tried a few things to fix it up. I'm not sure if it's just a bit of a bad connection or, or okay. whatnot. But when I look at my my sort of Wi-Fi thing, like it's all green, which <laughs> should be good. I don't know if something's downloading. 100%. Back. But yeah, it's not fun. You sort of... You come into a corner and then the internet drops out and you just, I don't know, it feels like you lose half of the tire grip. And nearly, now to go on, finish that, sorry. I, I think I nearly hit about 10 walls going across the top. <laughs> yeah, there are a few wall scrapes tonight from a few people. Don't worry about that. Um, you, you guys were on the ragged edge in the final few laps there. Let's come back to that in a moment. Um, Glenn, what was the decision behind the uh, obviously it was clear that it had to be a two-stop race what was the decision behind going a lap earlier than everyone else because you were the catalyst in that second round of pit stops you went then everyone else went and as it worked out the undercut really worked in your favor 
Oh uh, yeah, my teammate Brenton was just in front of me at that point. He went, so oh. I just went, oh, I'm going to follow now, Unfortunately, he was actually doing a really good job. He actually had a little bit of a slip up coming into the pits and clouded the ball a little bit. So I just sort of scraped past. Indeed. Now, um, Carl, I'll come back to you in a moment as well because I want to focus on that closing light battle that everyone's seeing on their screen here in uh, in just a moment. But first, I want to bring in Chris Whitaker. who is when you look at where the drama of this race started, folks, and there was a lot of it in an hour and two minutes, it started with this bike at Turn 1. How lucky were you, Chris? And again, I remind you, language warning, folks, it's Chris Whitaker if he slips something that's not my fault. Um, how lucky were you not to get battered from pillar to post at the first corner there? And what exactly happened with you uh, and, the, and the spin there? Uh, it was just a little uh, mistake with the brake bias that I had set, so I still had my quality. Mm -hmm. Uh, brake bias from when I had a slightly lighter fuel load and uh, a little yep. bit of rear and I just pinched the rears and yeah entirely my fault uh, I hope I didn't damage anyone else's car in the process but I was just sitting there waiting for the, the big bang and it, it didn't come so yeah we um, yeah, turned around pressed on and uh, yeah one thing we didn't mention throughout the, the call tonight but now that we're seeing your car on screen 10 weeks 10 different liveries talk us through the, uh, the selection uh, process for this one uh, so this one's a bit of a retro livery. So um, the livery that I was running um, was actually from uh, or a replica of Dad's old Starion from back, back in the early 90s, old club nice. car. Um, nice. Then Brendan was running the alternate uh, livery that, we, that he sort of ran towards the end uh, just before he got rid of it. So uh, just a little, uh, yeah, a little something, something. Uh, the oldies have been watching every round back home. They're, they're listening right now, no doubt. So good day. There you go. But, um, <laughs> shout out. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's Brilliant. a quick, I love it. Quick, shout, quick shout out. Hi, Mum. <laughs> but um, yeah, so no, just uh, something different we thought would uh, would throw in the uh, in the equation there, and um, yeah, pretty basic delivery, but I think come up pretty uh, pretty uh, pretty cool, pretty good. Actually, while you're on the subject of shout outs, I I can't. Uh, say good night, good night to everyone without uh, saying this. So I've got to say happy birthday to my old boy. Fifty eight today is uh, Gregory. And uh, so happy birthday to Dad. Um, I rang him earlier just before we went on air here. I said, is it 58 feeling 85? He said more like 105. So I'm going to leave that aligned right now and uh, press on with the questions here. Chris, obviously that mistake in the, uh, the first lap uh, really prepared him any chance you had to battling with, uh, with Glenn or Cal for the win here, mate. Um, talk to me through the rest of the race, though, because it looked like Despite that turn one incident, it looked like it was relatively clean from what we saw of you. Uh, yeah, from what you saw of me, okay. Um, so <laughs> Talk to us anyway. Talk to us through. It was, it was, it was relatively clean. I, uh, I had yeah. a, an incident with uh, with the 41 in qualifying, ruining, ruining my good lap, and then uh, he decided to take me out with a couple laps to go, which uh, is apparently unintentional, but we won't go there. Okay, so. fair enough. Um, but, um, yeah, for the most part, bloody good fun come back through the field. I'll, t I'll tell you that much, but, um, yeah. everyone was pretty kind to me. I think they sort of, um, you know, yeah, blow the trumpet here, Chris, but, uh, they, they knew I had the pace, so there wasn't really much point battling, yeah. but, um, yeah. yeah, no, it was good fun. Um, Sam had a little boo-boo in front of us through, uh, through the cutting and I sort of zigged when I should have zagged and, and, uh, yeah, cleaned him up. But I mean, that happens. That is what it is. But, um, yeah, I was, I was really happy with how it was running until, um, until yeah, in P5 and. Yeah, unfortunately, that little uh, incident with a uh, with a lap car, um, but uh, these things happen. Unfortunately, uh, there's different experience levels and, uh, and abilities of different people throughout the series, so you've yep. got to understand that uh, that's going to happen from time to time. And and from your standpoint, mate, obviously a, a nice salvage effort uh, to come back to seventh when you consider you were right at the back of the field after that turn one incident. How hard was it watching everyone drive on by, knowing there wasn't a bloody thing you could do about it? Um, I actually wasn't sort of that disappointed that everyone, I mean, yeah, I was annoyed with myself, but I yes. wasn't that disappointed that everyone had drove past because no one hit me. So True. the car was still, True. the car was still straight and I sort of knew I had, um, had some reasonable pace there to burn, but, um, yeah, to, I mean, we haven't done a hell of a lot of overtaking apart from sort of like traffic, uh, for the rest of the series. So it was good to sort of, I guess, experience mm. what Kester and Trent have been doing, starting from the rear and, uh, and sort of charging on through the pack, but, um. Oh, it was it was good fun. It was good fun for uh, I guess ninety five percent of the uh, ninety five percent of the race. Yep, and second of the championship, I do believe on those numbers, mate. So 
Uh, time to uh, just check so, the, the championship based on provisional. Obviously, if there's any yes. uh, any protests, so we've got Glenn on three fifty six, Chris nice. Whitaker on three forty six. So very close, only ten points in it at the end. And uh, Cal Whatmore on three one three, Sam Collins two eight six, Ben Snell two seven three. So uh, so uh, um, Cal Whatmore's jumped up into the podium, finishes with thanks to the results in the last two weeks. See, missing one round didn't really hurt him in the end, so that was really good to see. But Chris, to finish on that, um, uh, is there? Or I, I take it there'd be some uh, fire in the belly to come back and have another crack and go one better next year against Glenn. Oh, yeah, I mean, Glenn's got some serious pace. He's, he's bloody fast and, yep. um, and, and, yeah, great effort on the championship. Well-deserved. I don't think there's anyone else in the field that deserved it more than mm -hmm. him. But, um, yeah, no, we're keen to, keen to come back and have a bit more of a crack. Um, Brendan's got his, uh, his new hardware should be rocking up in the, next, uh, in the next week or so, just in time for the end of this season. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, we can see a few more, um, uh, a little bit more of Brendan at the front of the pack. I'm not sure I like this idea of him finishing sixth when I'm seventh, but, um, you know, you've you got to deal <laughs> with that sometimes, that. don't you? <laughs> Indeed you do. Brendan Whitaker, let's bring you into the conversation at this point in time. Talk to me about the night from your standpoint, mate, because obviously you, you pipped Chris by 1.2. You were sixth uh, in, the, in the closing stages there. There was a lot happening around you in terms of positional battles. What was it like from your standpoint? Mate, it was an absolute nightmare. The, uh, obviously, <laughs> it's, a, it's obviously like really thick. <laughs> yeah, it's just tough track. Um, the cars are obviously difficult yeah. to drive. Congratulations to Glenn and the guys up front. The pace is crazy. It's a tough track. Everything's hard about it. So, yeah. But I'm just glad it's my best result for the series. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's a bit of progress there, which is good. And um, like they say, you've got to beat your teammate first. So that's a good start. At the end, end yes. of the season, got to get in there, sneak one in. But uh, no, we'll come back and have another crack next time. Looking forward to all of that, and I think uh, I think there'll be some entertaining uh, events for you guys in the next couple of weeks as well. We'll get Nick and Paul to comment on that a little bit later on uh, as well. Just because the series is done doesn't mean our Friday Night Motorsport commitments are wrapped up just yet. Uh, who haven't I spoken to yet? Trent Waves is still in here as well. I haven't had a chance to Trent, uh, speak to uh, Trent just yet, and uh, also Brenton Hobson's in the chat room as well. I'll come to you first, Trent. Um 13. Not an ideal result, but it just proves that uh, burning from the stern is easier on some tracks than it is on others. Oh, I think it, uh, the track, yeah, the track beat me tonight. It, yeah. <laughs> uh, it wasn't uh, as straightforward as I was hoping it to be. The car is just, yeah, absolutely big. Get across the top of that mountain the best you can. You roll around at 40% of what you can do and, and you still bang into a wall, you know. It was just, yeah. it was a super frustrating race for me. Um, yeah, had a shocker. I was going to say, the last time I saw you on, uh, wasn't even on the race feed, it was on the iRacing screen in front of me, it was uh, in the wall at the elbows, so you had some dramas there too. Yeah, every every lap before that one, um, I was able to knock into first, keep it in a straight line, not a problem, and then knocked it into first and decided to compression lock and set me sideways and I caught it, ended up facing the fence, and uh, then it would not go into reverse or first, so I was stuck there for about 10 mm. seconds, couldn't move, so... Um, thank you for the guys. I'm sorry, sorry for parking in the middle of the bloody elbow, but uh, luckily a couple of boys slithered around me and, and didn't stove me, so I ended up going to finish the race with a bit of a banana. But uh, I actually did my best lap of the race with a banana, so it was interesting. But anyway, that's how that's how troublesome it was. I was going to say, yeah, you were very lucky uh, not to get collected there at the elbow, as Chris was at Hell Corner on that lap. In, in many respects, though, your, your personal dramas aside, it was a relatively clean race tonight. Not too much drama to speak of um, in terms of car-to-car -car contact. Mostly there were one-car incidents, which was a very good thing to see. Not so much for the for the drivers involved in the incidents, but from the etiquette of the gentleman's racing club standpoint anyway. Yeah, I think for the most part, everyone was uh, driving with all within themselves uh, just to make sure, because everyone knew it was going to be challenging. So. Everyone's driving well within themselves, and uh, it was quite impressive that a lot of guys you know, managed to keep it on the back bit uh, for the first couple of laps, with the exception of a couple. <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, Chris, at the start, there was interesting. We, me and Kester and all the boys were sort yes. of hanging back to, to make sure we had plenty of room to, to dodge all the carnage. And the only carnage really was was Chris sideways at the end of Hell Corner there. So, uh, but we all we all seen him there, and, and uh, we all missed him and gave him plenty of space. So. Um, thankfully, he managed to uh, actually get a reasonable result towards the end there, minus the uh, little incident at the end. Indeed. Now, uh, Brenton, uh, Brenton Hobson, let's bring you into the chat for the first time this uh, series, mate. Uh, 
Third spot, five seconds off the lead. Team won three, and you even got to taste what the leading the pack felt like at some point there, I believe. Um, an interesting night at the office. Yeah, yeah, we're up and down like a yo-yo. Um, <laughs> it was good fun. I mean, just the cars without really much practice and haven't been driving them, but um, I'm a bit of a sucker for lots of power and not much grip, so I knew it was going to be good fun and I made a bazillion mistakes out there, but enjoyed every lap. So uh, obviously a big, big congrats to Posse with uh, picking up the win and the, the championship, I believe. So yeah. uh, that's awesome for him. And I wanted to come in and mix it with the guys, but didn't want to get in everyone's way. Obviously, a few people racing for points and stuff. So it's glad I didn't ward anyone up, but um, no, I had a lot of fun. That just goes to show, as you say, you weren't a regular in this, in, uh, across the course of the, the series, but the allure of Bathurst brings in a few extra entries here and there, doesn't it? Oh, everyone loves loves Bathurst, especially in a car like this. But, um, I mean, it's a combination. It's like a perfect storm for someone like me. The, these cars are good fun to drive, and it's a great track. Um, yeah, it's a really good combination. But more so for me was probably the fact that it's week 13. I didn't have other commitments this week, which is what allowed me to jump in. But I, I wouldn't mind if doing doing some more races um, in this as well. But I saw the guys were jumping in here and having good fun, and, you know, they, they enjoyed the whole series. So, yeah, um, yeah just something different for me. And that's what it's all about, having fun at the end of the day. Um, from your standpoint, obviously a good battle with Michael Schreyer. You were in the thick of it with Cal there at uh, some point as well. What was the highlight of the night? Um, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say there was a specific highlight, probably. There was a few lowlights, perhaps, but um, not really anything that stood out as a highlight. I mean, turn one on the first lap was dicey and interesting. I thought I was dead and somehow it wasn't. And then yep. uh, Larry Perkins stood on the pit entry while I was leading, which was no good. <laughs> and um, I couldn't believe it. I nice and calculated entry, and I just got the curb on the left-hand side at the turn, and the thing shot up in the air like a rocket, and I, that was it. And I was never going to stop it and nearly nearly killed Posse at the meantime. I think it gave him a heart attack. But um, As you do, yep. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of low lights, I guess. But I mean, I guess my uh, my inexperience in the series taking tyres at the last stop made for an yep. interesting strategy. I think if I didn't put it in the fence on the pit entry and I made a few errors trying to gain up all that time in the last stint, I mean, if that didn't happen, I think um, we would have had about it real cracker of a finish actually between us top three but um nonetheless that's how it played out it was good fun and learnt lots yeah, indeed indeed we did we all learnt lots actually throughout the course of the last 10 weeks that's actually a good segue into something we're going to talk about a little bit later on um but thanks for the moment to you uh, brenton hobson well done um let's go and have a chat to cal what more uh cal obviously we saw the the overtaking opportunity we put on uh, Glenn going into Hell Corner there with about six laps to go. How much, um, how, how difficult was it to try and find more overtaking opportunities as the laps ran out? Uh, yeah, I felt I had a little tire advantage over Glenn. And I'm not sure. Glenn, did you just take two at the stop like I did? I, was, did. Uh, was I that... didn't take any at that stop. Oh, no. none. There you go. Okay. <laughs> that explains it then. I took two. And um, yeah, I had that little grip advantage and it really showed up in the slow corners down at um, the final and the first. Yep. And uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm bummed that uh, Brenton had the mistake on the pits because yeah, we could tell four tyres were coming, but uh, we knew the pressure was on the gap was a bit big, so bummer about the mistake. And um, yeah, but uh, oh, the battle with Glenn, uh, as good as it was, I just made one mistake on the uh, second or third last lap and pretty much just kissed the wall lightly uh, up at the top of the mountain, but that uh, wrecked the front right of my car and uh, killed my speed just that little bit, a little, little bit of understeer on the, the left-handers and that sort of ruined the battle a bit, so I was a bit bummed about yeah. that. Yep. And, and I noticed that, and I'll get both of you to comment here, I noticed that the cars were on the ragged edge at the... Uh, Right across the top of the mountain. In fact, there were points where you you were sliding into corners and sliding out of corners. Glenn, I'll start with you. What was the grip levels like on well, the the worn tires that you were on at the end of the race there? Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. Sort of, I find actually they changed the tires uh, just a couple of days ago with that new build. And yep. for me, it's sort of as soon as you get one little slide, it's just killing the tires. So. 
yeah, I had a couple of little moments and it just dropped the grip down a lot. And then, yeah, it was a real struggle to keep the back end under. Cal, what about you? Because uh, you would have been watching Glenn slide around all over the place in front of you. Were you worried that he was going to slip and you were going to have a chance to slip up on the inside? Or were you more just watching that he didn't run and run off the circuit, run off the line, uh, or uh, come back into your uh, path if the inevitable did happen? Uh, yeah, if that happened, it would have been game on, and I was trying to make it happen. I was using yep. every trick in the book and probably just overheating my stuff a little bit. Like uh, in these, they're, they're like a school bus with too much uh, power and not enough tyre. And yep. if you overdrive them, you just get punished. It's diminishing reward. So they really, um, you know, yeah, I had my time again. I've, I don't know, would have um, just kept well within the tyre, front and rear. But uh, hey, driving ragged mm. like that is awesome fun, and the tyres yeah. plateaued a bit. And once they're once you've taken the good out of them, they sort of uh, just uh, you know don't get too much worse with how we were driving. So it was it was great fun on the on the edge like that. For sure, for sure. We noticed that you gained half a second on him on the last lap, but what actually happened, we didn't quite see it. We were on another shot at the time. We didn't quite see what happened on the penultimate lap for you to lose five, six car lengths there, Carl. What happened? Uh, yes, that's when at uh, metal grey, just, you know, flat wheeled the wall, but it, yeah, killed my car. And I knew as soon as I tipped it into Skyline, all of a sudden I'm barging out over the curb. It's like, ah, I've damaged my car. Uh, okay. And then, yeah, I, I noticed maybe Glenn's tyres were falling off the cliff at that same time because I sort of, you know, kept a gap, but not really enough to apply. That was the, that was the moment that you just saw on your screen there, folks. If you were wondering what Cal was talking about, that moment there where he collected the full curb at uh, McFillamy Park. So. Yeah, and look at that. Jeez, cook. So, yeah, uh, I knew absolutely. I'd done it. I was pretty happy with uh, keeping it out of the fence for the whole race before that anyway because it was, yeah, high pressure and... When you're sliding, you know, you're basically kissing mirrors. They don't have mirrors, but you would be. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, at, at, you know, all over the track. And, uh, yeah, especially down into the um, forest elbow, you know, you're really tiptoeing. Make sure you don't slide the fronts. It's very easy to lock the rears and, and rotate and look like a big idiot in front of the whole field. <laughs> We're on the edge of that every lap. It's great fun. Glenn, were you feeling any pressure at all during that last five laps with Cal right there? Uh, absolutely. I sort of, the first few laps, I felt relatively comfortable and then he was really, really harassing me and I had a couple of moments, I think one of them was up the uh, cutting, sort of lost the rear a little bit and we went side by side up through the next few corners. That was pretty interesting. It was good fun. Um, but yeah, I sort of, I tried to change my driving style a little bit because I wasn't getting as good at exit. So yeah, I was just trying to sort of slow it up a bit more on entry, like even if he was getting nice and close to me and I was just trying to focus on the exit just so I had that little gap down the straight. Nice. Two weeks in a row you two have stolen the show with a, a duel for the lead and it's one all. I feel as though we kind of need a showdown now uh, to settle the uh, the score. It's like State of Origin, it's one all. Um, brilliant performance from the pair of you uh, tonight, no doubt about that. Hang around though because we're going to throw the conversation around in a minute and I want to start with you, uh, Chris Whitaker. On a, from a scale of red to green red being fiery and green being peaceful how fiery was the uh the chat discussion tonight in the uh i racing server red um <laughs> turn, one was, turn one was red um yes. and then uh I, I think we had till uh what was it about lap uh, 22 or something was was probably green um yep. and then i would say uh, everyone just fired up again what's what's with some red well um Black. i don't know purple <laughs> Let's go purple. Red. Let's go purple. Yeah, I was getting, yeah. Red, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, that's it. One yeah. of those ones anyway. Purple. Yeah, I actually watched that one, Chris. I uh, mm. had a look at it. Um, yeah, I don't mm. know. It's one of those difficult ones. I think the car on the inside was, <clears throat> was trying to make room, but yeah, really hard to call. I just I just didn't want to use the, the colours white and black given the the hostility <laughs> that's been through I, that's why i went green and red so yeah, when, yeah, when, when, when you immediately up. said what's worse than red i thought oh no this is going to end ugly um, <laughs> too soon mate too soon that. exactly 100 percent. hey uh let's um let's start around a little bit more because it is the end of the 10 week stock car series and it's been an absolute rip snorter i've been with you guys for eight of those weeks and every race is just i feel it's got better and better and better 
leaving the, the hostilities and the fuel issues and the tyre wear and all those issues aside, Glenn, I'll start with you as the champion. You have right of way. What, um, what track, what round stands out as the highlight for you and do you have any other favourite moments you'd like to share from the last 10 weeks? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, oh, this one, to be honest, this one's probably one of the one of the toughest rounds because it's just such a difficult track and you're so close to just winning it every single uh, with the pressure from Cal all the way there. And I knew Chris was Chris was so close behind in the championship coming this one, so it was just yeah, it's hard to stay mm-hmm. focused and just make sure I sort of got to the end started. Indeed. Um, what um, did you? Uh, uh, okay, Bathurst aside, because Bathurst is everyone's, you know, dream venue. Did you have a favourite track in the other nine rounds? Uh, I mean, maybe maybe an overseas track rather than Phil Island per se. I'd probably go with Spa. Yeah, probably the. I love the high speed blowing track. It's sort of yeah, probably one of the better. Chris, same question. Highlight of the series, favourite track. Oh, highlight of the series. Um, I'd have to go. Uh, I'd have to go. Um, Chills Villeneuve because uh, obvious obvious reasons. Um, yes. <laughs> obvious reasons. That's it. But um, look, despite everything that went down tonight, you, you can't go past Bathurst. You know, yep. <laughs> everyone loves Bathurst, so it's it's still it's still my favourite. Um, so yeah, I, I, I had good fun tonight. You know, obviously there's there's issues, but <laughs> aside from that, you take that out of there. Um, even the turn one thing. I mean, you know. No one ran into me and uh, gave me the opportunity to go for a bit of a play. So you know, but um, yeah, I think tonight was still still up there with one of my favourite races um, you know, until say ninety two percent of the way through. <clears throat> that last eight percent, it's always a pain. Um, always that last eight percent, mate. Always. Well done, nicely put, um, Brendan Whitaker. Let's go to you. Um, I actually think this is probably my favourite since uh, my best result, I suppose. Yep. Uh, non-Australian track I think Watkins these tracks at Watkins are something else so mm-hmm. it's um that's a good experience but I think uh, I think that's about it mate I just want to have a quick shout out too while I got you for the uh, yourself and Nick and obviously the sponsors that have helped us out along the track yeah LJ Hooker Gangdar Subaru um, and Do A Drift yep. so big shout out to those guys without that obviously none of us would be having a crack <laughs> and it's, uh, it's much appreciated by everyone I certainly second that. Indeed, no, no, it's been Sorry. it's been great fun. I agree, hundred percent. And I'll um I'll bring Nick and Paul in to summarise and uh, look ahead very shortly as well. But no, we we uh, we've enjoyed what we've seen, and we have to. I mean, you guys are the stars of the show. We just sit here and talk about it. It's been really good to watch you over the last uh, ten weeks do what you do and and continue to improve in some aspects as well in uh, in terms of uh, your, your driving. And I guess. Before I come to, I'm going to come to you in a moment, Trent. So uh, don't leave me just yet, mate. Um, and uh, and also um, Cal for uh, some comments with regards to um, the the racing season that we've just had. Um, when you when you look at the last ten weeks and how different the world has been, and we've not been able to go and do the real thing, I think all of us now, if we didn't have an appreciation for just how um, valuable sim racing is to motorsport uh, beforehand, we've certainly got a bit more of an appreciation now, don't we, Chris? Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, Cal, yeah. Take that. I, I said Chris, but he didn't come through. Cal, you take it. Wait, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Let's press the button again. <laughs> That's all right. We'll come back to you, Chris. Go, Cal. Uh, yeah, so this series has given real gravity to one race that really bloody matters sort of like a high strength of field monday night vh yeah. i guess and um yeah just evolving through the series um having to really pick up our game with with glenn's epic pace uh yep. going through despair at being so slow <laughs> and um and then uh you know montreal was a cracker of a race yep um and what's the other one? Canadian Tire uh, Motorsport. I actually was faster than Glenn with my, you know, previous experience in the place. True. Yeah, you know, yep, uh, that that was cool. And then Philip mm. Island was, was a sweet bonus. I actually got improved. I could beat him. And uh, yeah, that that meant that um, yeah, you know, just the belief that I could uh, sort of, you know, 
he is beatable. And um, yeah, yeah, with pressure, you know, he's human. He's got two hands and two feet and he's driving the same cars, <laughs> you know. And, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, just um, let us be able to mm. have you know, a proper toe-to-toe battle like that. And uh, yeah, look forward to more of them. And, and sticking with you, Cal, I'll come back to you in a moment, Chris. Sorry, I'm just going to stick with Cal here while I think of this. As someone that's done the best of both worlds, and, and we know you love your sim racing, how much um, how much energy is it zap from you across the course of, say, tonight, where you've been on the sim for nearly three hours with uh, practice, then qualifying, then the racing? How much energy does it zap from you compared to the real thing? Yeah, yeah, it definitely... Um... Uh, it takes it's a lot of effort. Uh, other nights where I put you know, a bit too many hours in, you end up with a cranking headache. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, always get a sweat up. I'd sweat sting my eyes uh, earlier. But, um, yeah, somehow you get a bit of a rest around Bathurst down the straights. So, <laughs> but, but some of those tracks are absolutely physical as, and um, yeah, I, I rate it really highly um, because it's a true level playing field. Um, all real racing, someone's got a slightly better. Uh, uh, yeah. This, this, it's exactly a level playing field with everyone. All you can change is uh, steering rack and um, and brake bias. Apart from that, yeah, everyone's playing with the same toys. Really puts an onus on driver ability and who adapts to. I mean, in, in the production car case, each different car the best, and and in the stock car case, each different circuit. And on that note, it's mostly for six of the last eight weeks being Glen Possible, but that's okay. We'll, we'll come to Glen in a moment. Chris, I'll come back to you. Sim racing, the really big winner out of all of this COVID shutdown situation. Those of us that didn't have as much of an appreciation for it as people like Cal beforehand certainly have that appreciation. Now I know that works both ways, not just drivers, but broadcasters as well. Those that are just motorsport enthusiasts. We've been really lucky in the COVID shutdown to have an avenue in which to immerse ourselves and amuse ourselves over the last uh, 10 or 11 weeks. And I know that'll continue for a few weeks yet as we wait for another two months for the for the real thing to start back proper. My goodness, Zach, that was a hell of a question there, mate. Um, Sorry, I'll try. The vol, mate, from the F1. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, can you repeat the question, please? Um, no, look, I think that obviously the big winner at the moment is... Um, mm. is uh, the likes of iRacing and those that sell the hardware. I mean, trying to buy anything at the moment is just impossible. But uh, yep. we we'll look forward to when the bargains are when the bargains are all released at the end of this. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. But um, yeah, look, it's I think it's one of those things where it's um, it, it's particular with you know the Supercar Boys and the likes um, being on Fox and you know everyone can sort of plug yeah. in and see exactly what it's all about. Whereas before, I guess there was probably a bit more of a stigma relation to um you know any uh any sim racing that uh, it's just a game and it's it's not real and this and that and the other and i think until you actually sit your butt in a seat and uh and try to do a couple of laps you don't understand um how similar it is to the real thing i mean okay you haven't got the g-forces and the fear factor and stuff like that but now uh, when you look at i racing compared to some of the other the other platforms that are out there and um you know the variations with changes in setup and brake bias and just little things like that the way your tires wear it's so similar to the real thing that it's, um, you know, we're, we're just fortunate to be, I guess, living in this time when we've uh, obviously got this crap going on in the background, but uh, we've, uh, we've got an avenue to, avenue to go have a play. Absolutely. And, and I think a lot of us are very thankful after seeing some of the shunts uh, throughout the course of the last 10 weeks, but uh, this one isn't as costly as the real thing either. Of course, the, uh, the, the, the rate of attrition depends upon some different circumstances. I mean, you talk about the two cent piece ruining uh, races. It was internet connection that could uh, could have ruined Glenn's race tonight. You talk about um, the, the differences between the two. Yes, there are a lot, but it all adds up to the same thing in the end. There's still a spectacle. There's still bragging rights on the line, and there's still so much to enjoy about it, even though, as I say, we can go a little bit harder because we're not – affected personally and physically harm wise or financially by anything that might happen out on the virtual racetrack and that's a really good thing glenn your comments on all of that obviously sim racing the big winner over the last 10 weeks sim racing other than yourself the big winner over the last 10 weeks obviously um and and i know a lot of these guys that weren't big sim races before are certainly making plans to incorporate them into their lifestyle when they can get back on the track proper what about you oh uh, yeah definitely i've sort of I've been on iRacing for oh, five or six years now. And 
yeah, I sort of come on here sort of a fair bit, but yeah, at the, at lately obviously we've been pretty flat out on here because there's not much else we can do. So yeah, it's it's also been great for eye racing, and it's it's good to see so much uh, sort of eye racing content sort of broadcast and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'll just keep using it as I have been, just a fair bit, use it for a bit of practice and just have some fun. Trent Lavis, let's go to you, yeah, because um, we haven't heard much from you in the conversation tonight. But again, what these guys have said, you weren't big on the iRacing before you've come and joined us for the last 10 weeks or so. Uh, you've taken to it pretty well. You had the win on the uh, Oval at Indianapolis, the IndyCars last Sunday night. I, I feel as though there's fuel in the fire for more of this in the future for you as well. Yeah, mate, it's just... Uh... A matter of managing your time, I suppose, the best you can. You know, I've got to go to work. <laughs> We're all about to eat, you know. Um, you know, you got to spend some time with the missus every now and then if you get the chance, but uh, that can be on the back burner every now and then as long as you don't get in strife. But um, Haley's been actually awesome, yeah. um, letting us to do spend a lot of time on this and, and also you know, with work and things like that in between. She's been, she's been fantastic. Uh, been supportive yeah. for letting me upgrade the gear and spend oh, a lot of time. Nice. To it, would you? Mate, you know, you know, you know, as well as I do, the bounty points count for everything. I was, I was just going to say, you keep some fun. You got to, you got to pay to play, right? <laughs> you know, he, he's crawling very well at the moment, Trent Lavis. I hope the missus is hearing this. Well, the elbows and knees are a bit burnt, but we'll get there. <laughs> very nicely put. Right now, um, let's talk about a couple of other factors here, and I know I haven't incorporated everyone into the conversation, but Brendan Whitaker, I'll start with you on this one because I'm trying to incorporate everyone as evenly as I possibly can. Nick and Paul, I'm going to come back to you as well. We've got a few weeks now where the production car series has been extended. We're waiting to see what uh, we can do on a Friday night to keep you guys entertained. Any ideas on what you'd like to do? Is it different cars? Is it circuits that we haven't visited in these cars? If, if we were to put ideas to Paul and Nick, and we know they listen to our feedback, they've done very well so far, what would you like to see to entertain yourselves and amuse us all on a Friday night over the next couple of weeks while we support the production car series and ensure that the viewers on Do A Drift Esports still have a double header to look forward to? Brendan, I'll start with you. Yeah, I think we'd uh, jump in, happily jump in the production cars, mate. Try and build their fields up possibly too and mm. I suppose sit behind Do A Drift and yourselves with the commentary and keep the team together. Good idea. Uh, Chris, would you like the have some special events in a different car or would you like to run on some circuits that we didn't run on in the stock car series in the stock cars what would you like to see for the next few weeks uh i think a run in the stock car stock cars at another track um yep. maybe something a bit different a, a tight track or or something you know like a, a a laguna or something like that maybe um that, that'd be a bit of fun but yeah pretty well as brendan said as well i think i'm pretty keen to jump in the uh, production cars and sort of have that um I guess variability, variability, that's yep. a hard word to say. Um, you know, having the different Absolutely. track, different car each week and um, sort of levels the playing field a bit as well. You know, not everyone's good in you know, just one car. So there's going to be sort of uh, different people at the front of the pack each week, I'd imagine. Big thanks to Glenn Possilwater. He's had to uh, jump out of the chat room, but a big congratulations to him as the champion in 2020. We'll be back for more of the same in due course and looking forward to obviously seeing him pop up wherever we end up with uh, our special events over the next few weeks. Uh, Trent Rivas, your turn. Uh, sorry, missed the question, bud. Oh, come on, mate. Are you, are, are you on the spiced rum again, are you? Uh, which one? There's about five of them before this one. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shows my results, mate. The, the, the good thing about iRacing, no D, uh, DUI tests. It's lovely. Um, I was saying over the next few weeks, we've got a, a few gaps to fill. Obviously, the production cars are ongoing, but we need something to fulfill uh, the double header requirements of a Friday night for Do A Drift Esports. So, uh, if you had to pick and choose, would you go a different car? I know you like the Indy car after Sunday night. Would you go circuits that we didn't race on in the stock cars? What would you like to see over the next couple of weeks? I'm sure there's a handful of people in this field that would be totally unanimous in this decision, but. I absolutely love the uh, the new 1987 Thunderbird and Monte Carlo. They are fantastic fun to drive. Nice. Solid, on any solid. track, on any track, oval, road course, they are just a shitload of fun. Been a shitload of fun. Oops, there it is. It wasn't me. <laughs> I know it wasn't Chris. I'm as surprised as anyone else. It's all right. I'll, I'll revoke my membership tomorrow. 
Tra- Trent Lavis, um, just to have a water for the Swear next three jar. minutes, will you? Swear jar. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm actually, if, if, as I said to Chris earlier in the day, he was trying to roll me up. Let's go time certain. We very nearly bloody did tonight. It was one hour, two yeah, minutes, and ten seconds. seconds. It, yeah, five seconds we got back to the line to get the last lap board by. I was, oh, I was seething. I was like, I, I said to Chris, if anyone had, had to uh, worry about uh, swearing if we went time certain, it would have been Chris. It would have been me. Um, I, I Man, I've been so good this whole time, attention. not blowing the whistle, but I imagine. I know, exactly. At the end of one minute to go, and I've, I've, I've blown it. Sorry, boys. <laughs> well, well done. People watching. Cal Watmore, um, you just messaged us saying the Infineon Raceway, Sonoma, California. That is it. That is a great racetrack, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Last week or whenever it was, we were talking about uh, tracks we should run. That's the obvious one that I think of, of course. The cup cars yeah, run no, there. Absolutely. It's a perfect track. Uh, you know, it's winding, undulating, yeah. up and over, real tiptoe stuff. Really brings out the challenge of driving these. I, uh, I think uh, uh, Nico yeah. Pop might have an announcement about next week. Okay. Interesting. Nick, enlighten us, entertain us, amuse us, please. Well, uh, I got your message loud and clear there, but basically <laughs> uh, we're going to be uh, testing a couple of things. We'll do an all-star race this coming next couple of weeks. So nice. uh, we're going to open it back up with, I guess, one of the main reasons why tonight was a lot cleaner is I clamped down on the licensing. Yep. So uh, fly, uh, FIFOs, as I like to call them, fly and, f- and another word <laughs> out, um, can't come in and screw up the, the field as what happened the last couple of weeks. So um, I'm going to open up the licensing again and we're going to try some tracks and try mm. some new things, uh, different formats, all that kind of stuff across the coming weeks. And um, they will be tracks that are aligned together with the uh, production cars. So uh, for next week, Production okay. cars will be at Monza short, and the stock cars will be at Monza full GP. Nice. Excellent. So just trying some different things. We've got a couple of weeks up our sleeves, so um, why not? Yeah, let's give it a shot. Trial and error. I like it. Hey, uh, Monza's a nice track as well. We, uh, we love Monza, and uh, that'll be... I mean, it's it's difficult because there are a couple of big stops there, but it'll be a fast race as well next Friday night. So Monza, the, the venue. There you go. You heard it here first, folks. Still drifting um, sports exclusive. Paul? Okay, just, just, uh, is it, are you going to do Monza combined with the oval section? Oh, that would be ooh. fun. Without the chicane. That's a good question. I like that. We'll, we'll have to do some testing during the week. Yeah, boys. Well, I, I don't know. For we, it. we had a race the other night now. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Awesome. All right. Awesome Draft City. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. 100%. Hey, um, I was going to say, um, is there someone that I've left out in all of the, I don't think I've left anyone out. I think everyone's had an answer for me in terms of what we can do over the next couple of weeks. And I, I, I love what Cal said about Infinity on Raceway, Sonoma, California. That's an obvious one when you think about drop cars. When you think about it, you think about Watkins Glen, but also Sonoma as well. It is the first ride course race of the year uh driver of the night nick and paul your turn to come and have a chat here uh just having oh, just two, two things before we do that yes, I, was, I was waiting for you guys to come to me during the race during the safety car well no, we never no, did because no, i can't drag you in i can't drag you yeah, in sorry, so, that, that, that was my bad um <laughs> yeah, definitely choosing the back end mate but um yeah i thought yeah, it was good you concentrated where'd you finish oh uh, that's ten. right we, we we saw we saw the advantages to letting the driver slash commentator concentrate on Monday night when Paul went so well into the last lap at Road America. So we just thought we'd ride with it. Oh, fair That's enough. Because I was now, expecting, I'm going, I was waiting, 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 and like we got what, we're running all these laps under safety car. I was really slow, and I'm going, they can talk to me now. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> all, all good, all good, all good. That's all good. Um, from from my standpoint, I'm really looking forward to getting off air here because uh, I've got a football game to go and rewatch because uh, my team actually played a little bit better than they did last week tonight. So I'm looking forward to watching a replay of that. No, 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 the storm, mate. The other end of yeah, um, the other the other Queensland, if you like. Um, so looking forward to that. The Broncos were woeful last night. Fair and what a disgrace that was. I thought they were bad against Parramatta in the finals and last week, but that took the cake last night. It's not as though they played incredibly badly. Like I, I may have gone over the top and said the women's team would beat them. Maybe not the case, but um, the Roosters were just that good and really sent an ominous message to everyone that they might just be a three-peat con, uh, contender for the premiership once more. Um, let's go back to motor racing for just a moment. 
Paul, what we go to you uh, oh, and ask you the same excellent. questions with everyone else. Before we go to driver of the day, let me come back to you and Nick. Yep. Um, I know you guys have got to think about driver of the day and we've got about uh, 25 minutes before we got to wrap up here properly. Um, from the standpoint of the organisers, you've got to be happy with the growth of the series, the growth of the club and everything else that you benefited, geez, I'm having trouble now, benefited from due to COVID-19. And you must also have a couple of highlights from the series worth mentioning as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been, um, I mean, uh, unheralded times for everyone, I think, over the last three or four months. So uh, one of the benefactors has been iRacing and sim racing and, um, you know, we've seen that in the club growth. Um, I think we're up to 650-odd members. Uh, probably yeah. three, three months ago, we are at 80-odd members. Uh, the turnouts to the racing has been amazing. Um, yourself and uh, Rob Hasseldine and, and Dual Drift Esports has been a you know, major contributor to that. Thank you to you guys. Um, and I think, uh, you know, the comment tonight, that I'm not sure who yeah. said it, that, um, that, you know, until you try sim racing, you think it's a game, um, but it's fairly realistic. Yes, you don't get the, the G-Force experience, but you do have all the other experiences. So <clears throat> tire wear and you, know, you need to look at fuel and um, setups. So I, I think it's a really good um, assessment of, of, of this series and um, what we've been able to provide. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm really happy with the way it's going. So For sure. And just when you... Um... When you look at the, sorry, I'm, get, I'm getting messages here and uh, getting distracted, but I'll get back to that just, in a moment. Just, just on that, Zach, just quickly. Yes, uh, Robert. They, they did say one of the things that you don't get to experience with the uh, with the sim racing is the fear of crashing. But I can guarantee you that um, my girlfriend would be more than happy to stand there and throw things at me and make make a lot of pain if I crashed in the wall. So <laughs> it, it's possible to simulate it if you want to do so. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I saw I saw your first run on I racing, Rob. You don't need the distraction. No, I, I give myself enough pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Hey, um, just quickly uh, from from uh, your standpoint, Paul. What was if you had to pick a race in terms of what we've done over the last ten weeks for the stock cars? What would be your pick? I'm finding this race pretty hard to beat. I think this, the finish for the series has been amazing. I mean, the yeah. the, the the end there with Glenn and Cal, uh, and also for, for Brenton to jump in, you know, he hasn't, I think he's only done two races with us in the stock cuts. Obviously he has uh, an immense amount of skill, but um, that that finish tonight was just epic. Um, yeah. You know, really close racing. And I think in the end there was what, uh, 0.4 of a second over, over that, you know, the, the hour race. That's pretty amazing. Incredible stuff indeed. Hey, yeah, uh, let's throw it to Nick now because you've spent a, a mix of, weeks in the commentary box to weeks in the sim racing with these guys when it comes to the stock cars do you have a favorite race do you have a favorite standout moment do you have a favorite track apart from bathurst because everyone else has said that already uh okay working backwards favorite track probably uh, of the ones that we did it'll be a close <laughs> toss up between watkins Glen and uh, montreal yep uh favorite moment i don't actually have a favorite moment or race but i have a favorite thing is the just watching the coverage Yep. The um, presentation week on week, our coverage, the commentary, everything that goes into the production side of things. Yeah, I second that. Um, it's been bloody outstanding. I mean, even just going to the little things with the do a drift symbol that spins around. Yep. I remember the night uh, Robert did that. Yes. And um, it took him a good couple of hours to do that. And just little things that make make this um, possible. Obviously, LJ Hooker Gander and Central Coast Subaru helping out as well. So, um uh, participation of all, all, all the drivers and, and, and the uh, community coming together. So um, my standout more than anything else would be the presentation. Cool. All right, let's talk driver of the day and let's also talk driver of the series. Um, wow. <laughs> someone, can someone drag Cal Watmore back in, please? Because he's just logged himself out and he's just asked to be dragged back in. Um, let's talk driver of the day. Let's talk driver of the series because I, it's the end of the road for the stock cars, Paul. I'm going to put a vote up for Nick. Uh, so started 18th, uh, finished 10th. Uh, I think based on what I can see here, biggest mover. Yep, agreed. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. See what happens when we leave him the line. Uh, correct. Yeah, there you go. I couldn't yeah. put a lap together and qualifying to save my life. Yeah, Every lap was an off actually, track. So. We actually watched a, few, uh, a couple of laps during broadcast. And we knew oh, that. We okay. were off tracks and 
couple of war hits. So, um, yeah, we knew you were, you were fast, but um, just couldn't get a lap down. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm thinking also if, if I want to look further up the field, uh, you'd have to give a, a vote to Brendan Hobson. I know we spoke to him Absolutely, earlier yeah. in, in the chat room. Here he has since left, but um, to just come in, not be a regular in the series, put himself in the third spot at the end of the night and right there up until that second round of pit stops when he, as he said in his own words, did the Larry Perkins coming into the pit line. Um, he was right there with Cal Watmore and Glenn Possible, he was a real chance. Uh, the big break of the night was for Glenn Possible. Like those network issues sorted themselves out pretty bloody quickly for his good, uh, his, uh, his uh, well-being in terms of the championship result, because if that was worse, it could have been worse and it could have been uh, uh, Chris Whitaker's uh, championship. And also, I mean, let's not forget, Nick did a great job coming from 18th to 10th, but Chris from the back of the field to come back through after the first corner and finish yeah, seventh was a fair great. drive yeah, as well. Enough, yeah. So I think I think we need to point those three out, yeah. Hobson, Whitaker, and Nick. As far as the series is concerned, let's leave Glenn Possibly out of this because he won the championship, and let's probably leave... Um, Chris and Cal, with no disrespect to them, let's leave them out too because they also won a race along the way. But who would be the other standout performers you'd like to mention right here and now? I'll leave this open to Nick and Paul before we go any further. Well, I just want to mention Michael Strayer. Like, um, yep. he's been there or thereabouts the whole season. So, agreed. Yeah, awesome asset. Um, Daniel Ackland as well. Um, yep. And Brendan Whitaker. Like, they've all been around that, that, that point. So, um, and Chris as well. Like, um, amazing. So, yeah. I would I would say look for for tonight um, as a standout, Britton Hobson. Um, yep. Turn up and to do a lap time. So, Glenn Pothersweight, two minutes ten point seven six two. Yep. Britton Hobson, two minutes ten point seven seven three. Incredible, eh? Incredible. Wow. Um, just so. Over, um, I, I've got a suggestion. Yes, and Rob. This is because of some information I only just found out. Um, yep. I think it was yesterday or the day before. Um, yep. Now I'm going to suggest um, Adam, who's been doing all the camera angles, and not because he's doing the camera angles, but <laughs> I, I presumed that he helped out all the skid control boys um, uh, with his brother Trent, and I just presumed that he'd been driving like uh, like Trent for a long time. And I actually found out the other night yep. that he doesn't. So he's jumped in all these series and has been racing. And for the most part, doing really well considering he doesn't he he doesn't race in real life. This is his first uh, step wow. of racing okay. as, as far I didn't as know I that either. Now <clears throat> Look, train, train he received in. his he received his Fanatec gear maybe a bit over a month ago. Yep, we helped him set him up, and we, we well, me and Kester went down to Lismore, jumped the border when the borders opened up a little bit there. Nice. We went down, had a go of his rig, and helped him set it up. But by then, we already done two weeks of racing, and. Uh, yeah, the big fella. He knows. He knows how to steer. He just, yeah, unfortunately, just never had the opportunity in real life to really do the proper stuff. Um, but he's got the knack, uh, I suppose we we'll call it, um, and the patience. And uh, and yeah, he he'll be a force to reckon with moving forward. I reckon in next Definitely, season. Definitely, yeah. I have actually, actually seen his, um, his L plates in the back of his car. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, okay. I know the <laughs> no, name. No, that's that's bloody. That's Paul Paul that's, Jansen. Is yeah, it? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I was going to say too, Trent. Um, the uh, the interesting thing there, when you look at you, you just said he's got the knack for it and he's got this and he's got that. How many how many people have we seen not be able to go too far up the ranks in Australian motorsport because they've got the talent but they don't have the financial? I mean, it's it's a crushing reality when you look at the history of Australian motorsport. The drivers that could have been that weren't because they didn't have the paycheck. And that's uh, a real disappointing thing about our, our, our industry. And that's probably one area in which sim racing has really helped bring those guys to the fore. Because, again, it comes back to natural talent if you're in fixed setup machinery like what we were tonight. Um, I wanted to give an honourable mention to some of the regulars like yourself and Sam Collins who are more racer racer than I racer racer, if you can follow the English that I'm trying to spit out there at the moment. It's been a long day. Um, because you've come in and you've adapted to it and you've progressed nicely throughout the course of the 10 weeks as well. I mean, Sam Collins was eight tonight. We know you had a shocker, mate, down in 13th, but you got that win at Indy, in the Indy car on Sunday. You've had uh, some good results in the stock cars as well, not without a bit of bad luck along the way, being involved in other people's incidents and all that sort of stuff. So I think you guys deserve a bit of a mention 
as well for coming in and and as you said learning on the go and there's still plenty more of that to come nick have uh, you got anything to add uh in terms of driver of the day anybody who did double duty myself included hmm. uh to very good um jump in two different classes completely two different driving styles so that does include Adam as well. Uh, I can't yep. see any other names that crossed over, but there were, I'm sure there was a couple. Um, but uh, having the same track makes that bit easier, but just, yeah, going between different cars, different uh, yeah. styles of driving. I guess the only thing that was similar is they'll both left-hand drive an H pattern. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, mentions to small, them. Small mercies, eh? And then, and then uh, championship-wise, anybody yep. in the top 10, honestly, these cars, we know they're hard to drive, and, and yep. I've deliberately chosen to sort the men from the boys. Excellent. And people who can drive without too much downforce. So that includes the top three, but also, you know, fourth to tenth, Sam Collins, Ben Snell, Trent Laves, Levies, uh, Brock Payne, Mock Schreyer, Lavis. Brendan Whitaker, Levis, I got it, John, John McLaughlin. Um, so, yeah, all, all those all those guys there. I was going to say, we've been getting better with our name pronunciations as the season has gone on. There's no doubt about that as well. Hey, are you quickly seeing the seven-up car on screen there? That's Adam Lavis, of course. Now, that was my favourite livery of the night, only because I actually grabbed a bottle of seven-up out of the fridge before the broadcast, and it's been sitting here on the desk with me throughout the course of the night. I just thought that had a nice little touch of irony to it. And he also gets a nod from me because... The work that he has done with Robert to set the camera angles up on each of the circuits we've gone to, particularly Bathurst, he's absolutely nailed Bathurst tonight in terms of where he's had the cameras, in terms of what you normally expect when you watch television come October. So, no, he's done a tr tremendous job there. And, I mean, it probably he probably deserves a couple of bonus points in the driving department because it doesn't do him any favours spending time helping Rob set that up when he could be spending time uh, preparing his car, but uh, no, we greatly appreciate and, that. And Zach, look, um, I, I should just give him a little plug. Um, yep. Now, these sort, of, these camera angle packs that he's been working on um, are going to be available um, to purchase at some point. If you well, not not very expensive, so um, I, I highly recommend doing it. Now that the the cost of it is basically just to offset the amount of time he has to put into it because he's replicating yep. cameras, so he's not just picking an angle and, and sticking it there like a lot of people do. He's going back through footage of um of races he's picking the correct angles he's adding in all the cameras he's testing them not only did he have to test them but my screen as i mentioned previously isn't the same uh, it's not a full screen eye racing like i've i've cut off sections yep. so he's actually gone through all of those camera angles and customized them for me so that they fit within my screen that you see not the screen that you would see in front of me um yeah yeah so there's a, I, I can't believe how much goes into having to create these sorts of angles and things and it makes the difference if you go and watch um any other sort of uh, race on the standard cameras and things it's just it nowhere near as good so i gotta say keep an eye out for those i'll be posting them up um on the pages and stuff um how to get those so he is working on those and he's going to be doing different packs so he might do three three different packs for bathurst and you know different maybe like a fox a fox sports package and a you know whatever channel seven package you know what i mean uh, and a custom like package it. I like it. And any, anything that resembles broadcast is good enough for me. You know that. So, no, well done to you as well, Rob, because I know you're still learning the esports directing and producing broadcasting on the go as well. So, big thumbs up for all of that. Let's turn our attention to what's coming up on uh, Dual Drift Esports. I'm looking at the time. It's about 18 past 10. We've gone well over time as per usual. This post-race show goes longer than the race in most weeks, but that's okay. We enjoy having a chat and we know you enjoy it as well folks that's why there's still some people tuning in via facebook and twitch a reminder of course if you haven't already done so like do a drift esports via the facebook page and the twitch account as well and uh, even subscribe there and flick rob a little bit of support coin uh to do what he does of course it's not just motorsport the features on do a drift esports as he was mentioning earlier in the night he's got the blend line series continuing of course on tuesday night and we're back on monday night with a continuation of the mel porter designs GT Series. Now, we've already been to this venue in the stock cars. We head to Spa Frank Lachamp for the uh, for the GT cars this time around. So a few of these guys will be backing up and on a circuit that they're already familiar with, but obviously a car that drives totally differently to the stock car. A 45-minute race coming your way on that 7-kilometre masterpiece of road on Monday night from around 8.30 local time. That's Eastern Standard Time, of course. So 10.30 New Zealand, 6.30 in Perth. 
and uh, you can do your own calculations everywhere else around the world according to that. I'm not going to waste any more of your time on time zones and all that sort of stuff. I do enough of that on Facebook as it is. Um, as far as the rest of it's concerned, next Friday night, as you heard Nick say here exclusively on Dual Drift Esports, it's Monza. It's production cars and stock cars. The short circuit, which, I mean, it's pretty much just a flat-out sprint, that track. There are a couple of stopping points on it, as there are on most circuits, as you know. But um, it's very small, very short. It'll be a very fast production car race next Friday night. Looking forward to seeing what car they run there. And, and of course, the stock cars from the long course there on the Monza circuit. So looking forward to all of that. Of course, it was only announced this week that the Italian Grand Prix will be held on the weekend of September 4 to 6 at that venue. Of course, after a frustrating wait for the Formula 1 season to get underway, it is upon us at long last. Um, Nick, final thoughts, excuse me, on what has been a great night, a great double header. And when you combine the two races, the two different cars... I mean, again, it was an American flavour with an Australian. Uh, it was an Australian flavour with an American twist tonight because we had American cars, an Aussie track. But when it's this track, it means so much more to all these drivers, and you could tell in terms of the comments we were getting from them post race there that they wanted to do well here. It was an awesome night to be a part of. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bathurst. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he, can't, he can't do any better than that, really, for Australians in Australian motorsport. It's Bathurst. Um, I know uh, there's a couple of people that weren't too happy with how they performed tonight and yep. and the like, but I mean, I'm I'm going to try and keep it, keep it on the on the calendar as much as we can because um, it will also filter into the stock car, uh, so the production cars. For but sure. um, my, my my takeaway from this is we've we've I think we've found some of the best sim racers mm. in Australia uh, oh, that, aren't, that aren't professionals or professional racing car drivers. So um, I want to keep that rolling with our professional uh, presentation and and uh, mm. uh, direction. So um, yeah, th that's my biggest takeaway from this. And also, um, excuse me, uh, just to have fun. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what it's all about. And I know Paul will second that as well. Rob? Yes, I was going to say just quickly, Nick, I think the uh, the next challenge will be to see if we can get some of the, the best racers from around the world to, to come and race against our racers. Um, I've shared the... This this event was shared across to some of the uh, the international pages I'm on. So if anyone's tuning in from the US, I don't know if, it's, if they're all sleeping there at the moment. Or uh, the UK, or anywhere. Well, welcome to the stream. Or if you're watching this uh, after the fact, welcome. Um, I'll have to make a highlights package of Zach going off his rocker. Well, the, I think, <laughs> I think nice, anyone, work. Anyone, nice work. Anyone tuning in from the US close. who was uh, looking at the stock cars has probably seen something they might not have before on uh, Bathurst. So if you're interested, uh, come and chat to us and, and jump aboard and have a race for yourself. For sure. And of course, uh, all you've got to do to be uh, a part of the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, apart from supporting the code of uh, conduct, is uh, of course be involved in the iRacing community in some way, shape or form. So uh, do inquire with uh, Nick and Paul about all of that as well. I must say, uh, I, was, I was one of those people. Rob's been trying to win me over over the last two years. He's been trying to win me over with these esports stuff. I think he's finally done it over the course of the last eight weeks. iRacing is definitely here to stay. It's a part of our lives that, uh, I mean, it's it's become an integral part of uh, over the last uh, eight to ten weeks. And then, I mean, it'll stick with us because not just because of uh, COVID-19 and, and the aftermath and the fallout from all of that, but also because of the entertainment that it's provided while we've not been able to do the real thing. We have a greater appreciation for uh, uh, this ins incredible market that iRacing is for um, and and hands-on experience that uh, it has provided at a time where we haven't been able to do the real things. So, as I say, a, a huge appreciation for what these guys do and what this um, platform is more so than what we were probably previously before uh, we had to rely on it for our entertainment, if I can say that. So, on behalf of um, Do a Drift Esports, all the great people at uh, the Gentleman Sim Racing Club, LJ Hooker Gander, Central Coast Subaru, all certs, um, 
Ocular, of course, for the aerial shots you saw tonight. And also, of course, our other sponsors, including the Porter Designs. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our coverage. That has been the Stock Car Series for 2020. The boys aren't done yet, though, because they're going to come back next Friday night. We're going to have a few special one-off non-championship events for you, an all-star race coming up as well. I wonder whether that'll be an arrival. We'll wait and see what Nick's got planned for all of that. But we're very excited about the continuation of the production car series where Michael Hammond continues to lead, of course, after he's been earlier in the evening. So it was the two champions, or the championship leaders at least, that got the job done tonight. A cracking race in the stock cars. Cal Whitmore pushed Brian Postlewaite every step of the way. But the champ cemented the, his uh, glory with the icing on the cake and a victory at the most famous place on the continent. 6.213 kilometres of motor racing heaven that always delivers. On behalf of uh, Robert Hazelgine, I'm Zach Cabin. On behalf of uh, Paul Nichols and Nico Pop as well, we say thank you very much for your company throughout the course tonight. We hope you've enjoyed Friday Night Motorsport on Do A Drift Esports from Mount Panorama. Congratulations to Glenn Possibly, your stock car champion for 2020. We'll see you Monday night for the continuation of the Melbourne Designs GT Series. Until then, have a great weekend. Bye for now.